everything in this universe has a beginning. The Big Bang. The formation of nebular matter into stars and planets. The first collections of amino acids in the Earth's oceans. The first creatures to leave them. The first mammals. The first primates that walked upright. The first religion. The first printing press. And ultimately, the first synthesizer. Robert A. Moog created the first practical, playable instrument way back in the late 60s. And no matter how powerful the synthesizers of our day, nothing comes close to that lovely, warm and organic sound of a Moog synthesizer. Here is an example for you to ponder.
Hello, hello, hey everybody, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, welcome, 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 welcome to Warhammer Sunday. It's another Sunday, it's been another week. I'm sure I've just done two live streams. I don't know. Welcome everyone, it's that time of the week when I spend the weekend working on my Warhammer army. And on a Sunday, I invite you in to just hang out and just be nutty in the chat. So, welcome one and all. It's been a week, hasn't it? It's been a week. For those of you who follow me, you'd, I've done a couple of live streams this week, working on my Strike Rouge Uotori Gundam. Yeah, now I've got this. It's like kind of cool, this. Now, now. Uh, I'll get all the blurb out of the way first, because we do have some news. But I'll get all the blurb out of the way first. All the usual stuff for anybody who's never seen one of these before. <sighs> now, what this is, this is my uh, Warhammer live stream. Like I said, I'm just working on my Warhammer army. I'm just doodling around with them, uh, and you can just hang out at the same time. Uh, probably might not teach you much today, but it's just a chance to hang out with everybody else in the chat. Uh, usually about two or three hours long, we'll go through. If you're watching this and you can't access the chat, if you can see the chat here on the screen, there is chat. But if you can't actually, I've just remembered, I forgot to set something. Hang on, it's gone wrong already. Oh, hang on, hang on. <sighs> this is where I realise my colour balance is all wrong. Oh no, it's fine, it's fine. Yes, if you've never seen one of these before, the chat is there. Uh, there is actually a live chat, and we will be doing sticker giveaways and things later on in the live chat. And I do depend on the people in the chat to give me stuff to talk about. So, if you would like to join in the live chat and you can't see it right now, you're probably watching through uh, Facebook or Twitter or somewhere else where I've linked to, just click on the little YouTube icon in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen down here somewhere in the player and it will take you to the YouTube page where you can see the live chat and it's worth joining in like I say we'll do sticker giveaways and things like that later on uh, we will be doing the wheel of giveaways uh, last week what do we have last week last week the wheel of giveaways spewed out the prize was tr upside down the prize was trees and soap upside down as well trees and soap that's what the prize was trees and soap trees and soap soap and trees trees soap trees yeah, that's what the prize was, so we need to find out who's won that, and we need to find out what this week's prize is going to be. Ooh, could be many things, there are many, many fantastic things for me to give away. I love giving stuff away. Yes. Um, also, as always, we are doing the stream boss battle. Now, if you watched last week, you noticed that I am no longer the stream boss, but it's there, it's there, I've just put my hand there so you can read it. The stream boss kicked out last week, kicked me out. Aviad Madar became the new stream boss. Uh, and he started off with 100,000 health. If you've not seen Stream Boss before, very, very quickly, all it is, whoever's the Stream Boss has 100,000 health, uh, and you guys, the viewers, need to knock them down to zero. Whoever knocks the Stream Boss down to zero becomes the new Stream Boss. That's pretty lame, but what's not lame is you basically win a Warhammer kit of your choice, or kits of your choice, or anything of your choice, really, but Warhammer's ideal because it's easy to ship. Uh, now, for an example, to give you an example of how cool that is, how do you knock my health down first of all? Very simple, if you're not already a subscriber to this channel, subscribe, uh, that will take a little bit of my health off. Uh, you can, if you want to, you can do a super chat. So when you're doing the chat, uh, if you see, I don't know if you can, you can't see on screen, but in the bottom of the chat window, there is a little, um, hang on, my iPad's going a bit wonky. In the bottom of the chat window, there's a little I, uh, dollar icon just underneath where you chat your message. That will pop a super chat up, which puts your comment in a big fat box. Uh, that also takes a little bit of my health off. And last of all, if you want to do a tip, you can do a tip. A tip jar address is down here, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru. That also takes a bit of health. I keep saying my health because I was the first stream boss, but it's not my health, it's Aviad's health. It takes a little bit of health off as well. And the more you tip, like the higher amount you tip or the higher amount you put through a super chat, the more health you take off. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if you've not seen this before, Aviad Madar, who is the new stream boss, won last week and he's just taken delivery of his prize, which was £280 worth of Warhammer stuff. Yeah, all the money you raise through stream boss sits in a PayPal account and then when it comes time to pick the winner, when the winner's chosen or when the winner makes themselves the winner, that money then goes towards their prize. So Aviad got himself, see if I remember this, I've not watched the video yet, he got himself Kill Team, the whole box set. He got himself uh, the uh, Renegade Imperial Knights set, the full set, <clears throat> so two knights and all the scenery. He got himself Kill Team cards, and he got himself a seam line removal tool. It was, it was just over 280 quid. He won that much, and it's just arrived today. He's put a video up in the Boom Hut. Uh, if you've not been to the Boom Hut, it's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash model Boom Hut. He just received that, like yesterday, today, and he's put an unboxing video up. So he is now... 
got all that stuff. So it's worth taking part in stream boss because it won't be every every won't be very often that somebody becomes the stream boss. But if you do become the stream boss, you can have two three hundred quid worth of stuff free, and it's just sent to you. So there you go. Oh yes. Anyway, Good that's oh, hello. We have uh, Tony Blackwell donated a uh, ten pounds iced ink. Thank you very much, Tony. Iced ink. Iced. I. <laughs> uh, I see what you did there. Iced ink. Yeah. Thanks. Whoop, Simpson. Very good, very good. <laughs> so you see there, Tony put a, uh, was it a tip? It was a tip. So Tony put a tip through, took my health, or didn't, oh, I must stop saying my health. It's not my health, it's Aviad's health. Took Aviad's health down a little bit. Yeah, so get him down to zero. Win yourself some cool shizzle. <sighs> now, um, yes, I do depend on you guys to ask me questions in chat. If you want to ask a question, please, please, please do. Uh, you can ask me anything you want. It can be about Warhammer, it can be about uh, model making, it can be about just, you know, pencils it could be about air any question you want um, just pop it in chat if you're going to just put it in chat make sure you do it in full big capital letters the whole sentence so i can have a chance to see it because i'll be down here working i might not see what's going on in chat over here so apologies if i miss anything um you can of course like i said before you can use a super chat uh, and that'll pop your comment up and it'll also do a big coloured box and I'll get an audio alert so it tells me that there's a super chat so I can't possibly miss your comment and the more you pay, the more health you get taken off Aviad uh, and last of all, if you want to, you can just bop me an email uh, I'll put the email address up bigger, bigger. <clears throat> Oh, uh, Cy Reynolds I see, da I see da I can't read that I see Dango Streeps on Hang on, it's a long way away on the screen on the other side I see Dango Streeps on Tekanitz I see Dango Streeps on... To, I don't get that. I see Dango Streeps on... I don't. <laughs> Nim says, sheesh, he's so hyper today. I am, I'm hyper today. Dead excited because Aviad got his prizes and I need to watch that video. It's, oh. So, yes. I, I see Dango Streeps on Tekanitz. I don't get that. I don't get it. I'll, I'll get it in a bit. Don't worry. It, it'll come to me. Um, what else? What else? Yes, if you want to do a... I forgot what I'm saying now. Do a super chat. Uh, do a thing. Oh, yeah, if you want to send me an email... Uh, my email address is here, modelmakingguru at gmail.com. Bot me an email, uh, any questions you like. Um, also, don't forget when I do sticker giveaways later on, uh, if you want to send me a question and answer to ask out as a quiz question, please feel free. Just send me the question, the answer to the question, and also your name and address. And if I use your question, I'll send you some stickers. Yay! Right, that's all the blurb out of the way. So, what are we doing? Well, I'm working on my army. Uh, if you've not watched this before, it's a um, it's going to be an Astra Militarum or Imperial Guard army, themed themed on the Principality of Zeon from the Mobile Suit Gundam anime. Uh, we have so far, I've done uh, an Imperial Knight in the style of a Zaku. Uh, I've done some Space Marines, some Primaris Space Marines, some Intercessors, uh, just in the style of a Zaku, which are all greens and dark colours. Uh, and at the moment I'm working on my armages, which if you know your Mobile Suit Gundam, or more specifically Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin, um, are going to be based on Mobile Suit, what are the, uh, Xeon Mobile Suit Workers, which are kind of the precursors to Zaku's. They're like big mechanical things, and they're just designed for like cargo hauling and stuff like that, and construction. And, but they are kind of orange with hazard stripes and little Xeonic circles images all over them and stuff they're kind of a utility vehicle so that's what i'm doing with these i'm basing them on that so they're going to be orange and they've got the hazard stripes and stuff so yes uh, now as you can see uh, i have in advance of this program i have painted some hazard stripes on these guys we've got some on the front of the pauldrons on the on the mobile suit workers we tend to have there's like two things on the back of the shoulders that have hazard stripes there's some on the side of the leg on a mobile worker there's like a thing here with hazard stripes on it and there's some on the feet. So what I've elected to do is kind of go for similar. Uh, you, uh, what's that? I've got a comment. Cy Reynolds says, you had to voice it as it reads, Fox. I said, see danger stripes on the night. Oh, right. I see dango strips on the Ah, right, I've got you. I see danger stripes on the night. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm I'm really excited today. <laughs> I don't know why. I just am. Um, so yes, so I've, I've put stripes am i talking really fast today am i like really really hyper i do apologize i will hang on let me have a swig of enormous coffee my liter of coffee i never know if my fast talking is either really really annoying by the way i've got a beard so i need tissue for the coffee that i've absorbed with my entire face i never know if um my fast talking when i get excited is really really annoying or just kind of endearing i don't know i don't know i get really giddy so yes, so to replicate the mobile suit worker, or the mobile worker, put some hazard straps on front of the pauldrons to replicate the shoulder pieces, because there's no similar sticky up shoulders. Uh, and I've put some stripes on the upper 
parts of the legs, but just on the outside side. So when it goes on, it'll go on. Is that, is that the best one to show? Yeah, it'll go on like that and it'll sit on the outside. Again, it's just to sort of be similar to the thing on the real mobile worker, which is kind of here. It's like a, it's like a bit on the shin. Uh, and then I will, um, I've started the base color there. I'm going to put some striping on the feet, smaller striping. I'm not going to do that on telly now live because it's going to take, it's going to be really kind of faffy to do that. So I'll probably do that quietly in the corner, but that's what we're going to be doing. So today what I'm going to do is I need to do all the piping, all the um, trim. Now with the Zaku, if you remember my Zaku, the Zaku is the grunt mobile suit. That was kind of all greens, it was Zaku coloured, and the trim was just kind of metal, but it was really dirty and scruffy and metal. And we're going to go for something similar on this. When I get around to doing a Goof and Char Zaku nights, because I'm going to have three nights, the Goof is going to be uh, maybe clean silver colours, and then Char Zaku is going to have gold trim, because Char Zaku is the bee's knees, so Char needs to be the best one. So this is just going to have, like on the night, scruffy, dirty nonsense. I'll show you, because I know some of you are new in the chat, and I'll come to the chat in a minute until you introduce everybody. I'll show you quickly, if you haven't seen it, my Imperial Knight. Move those out of the way. Uh, move this box out of the way. Oh. Just in case anyone hasn't seen it, I'll just pop him in quickly to give you an idea of what we're doing. So that is my Imperial Knight. He is, like I said, he's a Principality of Zeon themed Zaku Knight. Uh, and I say, if you know your mobile suits and your, your, your mobile suit Gundam, Zakus are the lowliest of the low mobile suits. They're like the grunt suits. They're easily disposable. They're produ mass production. They're just cheap and cheerful. They don't last very long. They're not particularly hardy or anything like that. So same with this guy. He's, gonna be, he's filthy dirty. He's cheap uh, mass production armoured titan. I know that doesn't really fit with the law. I mean, the whole thing doesn't fit with the law. But he's just hes just scruffy and dirty. He's got rust chipping. He's got dirt and dust and all kinds of nonsense going on. So he's going to look grubby. And these are going to look equally grubby and dirty. Uh, but then when we get to the goof, the goof will be a little weathered, but not much. And then when we get to the Char Zaku, Char Zaku will be not necessarily pristine, but pretty spanky. Let me put him away. Right. Uh, so, before we get going, so I'll probably just be doing most of the trim today. Uh, let's have a look and see who we have in. Uh, we have in, he says, scrolling through all the chat, we have Tony Blackwell, Earl Dean, Chad Lauren, and James Lorimore, all were like me, first, second, third, fourth. So I said nth. Uh, Rusting Customs and Models is in, welcome, welcome. Cy Reynolds, Lynn Dippel, hi Lynn. Uh, Rival Alfaridziki is in, I hope I got that right. Well, hello, he says, or she says. I never know, you see, it could be a boy or a girl, I don't know. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, team note, we have our mods in today. Uh, Mike Mountain, also known as Dad, or Scaly Models. Uh, Mike, you can log in as Scaly Models and pimp your own channel if you want, even though there's nothing on there. Uh, Mike Mountain is in, he's, in, he's a mod today. And Team Inept, who is Paul, uh, is also in. Paul likes being a mod because he can ban anything that moves. Uh, he's not really that bad, but he gets that excited and giddy and starts banning like tables and, and he just he bans like the buttons on the screen and everything else. I need to ban all the things. So don't give him a reason to use the ban hammer. <laughs> Uh, but Mike and uh, Dad and um, Paul are in. We do have other mods who may pop in later on. You never know. Um, just in case you don't know, the chat on this stream, it's not, it, this isn't the e-models live stream. If you want to use rude words and swears, you can do. I don't care. I'm an adult. We're all adults. We're all grown up. It's not a problem. Just don't be a dick, basically. Be a nice person to each other. You usually are anyway. But be nice. But I don't mind, I don't mind rude words. Uh, let's have a look who else we'd have in. We have Tony Blackwell, William Rayborn, uh, Scott Sutherland's in. He says, afternoon from the mythical Northlands. As we all know, Mike lives, uh, Mike, Scott lives in Orkney. Uh, Jeff Landis is in. This is my first Warhammer Sunday. Hello, Jeff. Welcome to Warhammer Sunday. I can't promise it'll be any good. Eh, this ain't no Duncan and Peachy, I know what I mean, but it's just me hanging out. But we probably don't get much work done, but it's just a chance to hang out. Now, the people you're in chat with are awesome, and you'll get to know them really well. Uh, they are really, really awesome people. So I'll probably just tend to do some painting and waffle for three hours non-stop. Uh, just hang out with the people in chat and have me on in the background. I wouldn't watch to learn anything, although I'll probably tell you some things, but have me on in the background. Uh, but welcome, welcome. Uh, he says he's just started collecting the Warhammer uh, and he's just started collecting uh, Dark Angels and Skitari. Kick ass, you're doing an Imperial Army. Nice one. I've got some Skitari to paint. I need to get them painted up. My army's going to have some uh, Skitari. It's got some Dark Angels from the old Vengeance kit set. Uh, it's going to have some uh, Imperial Guard, obviously, some Space Marines, some old Space Marines, Knights, 
there's some vehicles and things like that. I'm, I'm basically just making it up as I go along. I've got a whole stash of kits to build. Uh, and at some point, because I've never played, at some point when I've got enough built up that I've got, actually got codexes for, I'm going to go to my local Warhammer store uh, with manager, uh, Cam, and he's going to teach me how to play. And there's a couple of guys I know from here and from the Boom Hut, uh, Trevor, and who else? Uh, 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 brain's gone. Brain's gone. You, are, you know who you are. The two guys I know that, that, uh, that use my local Warhammer store. I've totally forgotten all your names. Anyway, two guys I know. They might be in chat. I've blanked on one name. It's terrible. It's terrible. I'll, find, I'll remember it in a minute. I'm just dead giddy today. I'm dead giddy. Because my hazard stripes came out really well. <sighs> who else have we got? Uh, so welcome anyway. Welcome. I hope you keep coming back. Um, let's have a look. We have... I said welcome and expect nonsense. And Jeff Landy says I excel at nonsense. Brilliant. Do, do, do. Uh, Jeff Landis, certainly that is why this is my favourite channel. Ah, okay, so you, you're a regular but not a streamer. Cool. In that case, you know the kind of nonsense. Uh, let's have a look. Nobody got the reference I put in. Um, I said, we're getting ready, we're just aligning the cat vectors. Nobody got that reference. It's a very specific reference. Nothing to do with Warhammer. If, if somebody can get that reference, I'll send you a sticker. Somebody can tell me where that quote is. It's, it may not be exactly the right wording, but aligning the kept vectors if you can tell me where that's from first person to get that right i'll send you a sticker <laughs> uh i see dango streeps says si yes dango streeps uh, mickle pickles in beyblade master hi dad everybody saying hi to dad uh probably missed all the people nim cinderin's in jordan nash oh ha welcome jordan uh let's have a look who else do we have in ghost lyle hi humans hi pineapples uh, Jonathan uh, Tirad, I'll just say Jonathan, because I always get your name wrong, and I don't like getting people's names wrong. Tirasad Tanun, but I'll say Jonathan. Uh, morning, guys, he says. Aviad Madar says, <laughs> Yes, Aviad Madar is the stream boss, and I'm not surprised he's gloating. I've not seen your video yet, Aviad, I've not had a chance to watch it. Uh, do, do, do. I've learned so much from this channel, really? Wow, I must be doing something right then. Uh, let's have a look. Who else we got to come in? Jeff Landis. Uh, are you streaming at 1.5 times speed? No, that's just me. I'm just, that's just me. I'm normal. That's how I work. Calm down, Fox. Yes, I know. I know. I need more coffee. Uh, Aculius. I always get that wrong as well. Aculius says, Hi, Fox from Fuerteventura. Just popping in to say hi before I hit the sunbed again. I've been to Fuerteventura. Mm. It's a nice place. Keep an eye out for that big old boat on the on the coast with the orange sail that does the tours around the islands i've been on that boat there's a guitar player and musician on there an entertainer called fernando presley he's, he's quite funny uh let's have a look Hi, uh, i finally made it to another sunday stream it's been a while says jordan you're always welcome uh jerry's in welcome jerry I'm gonna move this to the office i think then i can play yay Sorry, Reynolds, back shortly. I've just made a massive foobar and deleted 2,000 lines of code because I was watching this. Oh, this is where you tell me you're working on some, like, really important national security system or something. And it's like, yeah, I might have just deleted all the security for MI6 or something. <laughs> Brilliant. Fox, have you done a Gene Stealer Cults Goliath? Nope. Nope, says Frankie from Ghost of Hobbywood. No, not done any Gene Stealer Cults. All I've worked on so far, um, apart from I've built a Mortarian. I've not painted him. And that was just for fun. And I've built something from Sigmar. But all I've actually built for my army so far is Imperial stuff. So I built the Knight. Uh, I have some Space Marines. Uh, I have built a Land Speeder, but it's not part of my army. Uh, I have assembled some Skitari. I've assembled some Imperial Guard. Some Scions. Some Tempestus Scions and all that kind of stuff. But just Imperial, because I'm building an Imperial army. Uh, let's have a look. I'm painting zombies today, so much fun, says Ali Carr. Welcome. Uh, cool. Fox, you should get an Inquisitor for your army. I will do at some point. I need to not spend any money now. I spent all my money this month, so I need to not do that. So I will get an Inquisitor. I do have... I do have a Sly Marbo. He will be part of my army. Sly Marbo will be in my army somewhere. Uh, Thermonuclear Bobbington is in. What's up, guys? Hi, Thermonuclear Bobbington. Too many water slides, Verkar. Uh, so there we go. Right, yes, so earlier on I said aligning the kept vectors. If anybody can tell me what that reference is, I'll send you a sticker. None of them has got it yet. And it's not Firefly. Uh, there is a connection between the reference I'm making and Firefly. I think. I think. Might not be. I could be wrong. 
could be wrong. I could be right. There may be a connection, but it's not Firefly. Mm -mm -mm. Right, so what are we doing? So, yes, before I went live this morning, uh, well, not, not when I went live this morning, before this show went live today, this morning. Uh, no, it's not Andromeda. Um, I put a little bit of work in. I did these the hazard stripes on these parts. And I'll tell you what colours I used. It's, it's, I didn't really want to show it because it was a bit backwards and forwards and fiddly. Um, and it was a bit not interesting to watch. But it's basically just all hand painted. So what I did first of all was, let me get a brush, was I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. Hang on. Give to me the television controls. There we go. Where is the zooming? There we go. Crappy quality because I've zoomed in. Um, so yes, yeah, so what I did was, quite simply, uh, painted this panel first and we painted that with uh, Avaland Sunset. Now I can't remember my silly names for paint so you'll have to apologise, I have to apologise I can't tell you that. Avaland Sunset was the base colour, a couple of thin coats of that. Uh, then once that was dry I went over the Avaland Sunset with some Lamentas Yellow which is a glaze, which just gave it a little bit more of a bright yellow colour because Avalanche Sunset by itself is a little bit dull. It's a nice thick base colour. Then I just painted in the black stripes and that was really literally just Abaddon Black. Abaddon Black. Uh, again, just painted them in manually and then there was a little bit of touch up to do because the lines weren't quite straight. So I went back with the um, Avalanche Sunset just to straighten up the lines. But because, I, because the original coat had the Lamentas yellow on top. When I painted and cleaned up the lines with the Avalon Sunset, of course, there was a slight colour difference and it was a little tiny bit lighter. So I kind of brushed it like this and got sort of just at the tops, just to kind of give a little bit of a highlight. It's very subtle, but you, you can't really see it, but it's there. So I kind of cleaned up the edges and did the tops just to get a little bit of a lighter colour. And then once that was done, touched in the black, gave a couple of goats of black, just got everything nice and flat, and then went over the whole panel with some Cassandora yellow, which is a shade. And this works brilliantly on the Avalanche Sunset, just to get this kind of slightly darker orangier shading just around the bottom of each each panel. And that's that, that's how I did the stripes. It's just literally a case of, if you're wondering how you paint hazard stripes, you literally do the base coat, get yourself a good fine pointed brush, get your black, draw a straight line, like that, I've got to touch that bit up, draw a straight line in black, Get, use your paint a little bit thinner than normal, draw the straight lines, fill in the straight lines. And undoubtedly you have some bits where you've wibbled out of the line, don't worry about that. Once you've got the majority of the stripe painted in black, just go back with the other colour, in this case the, the, uh, the yellow, and just straighten up where you've gone over the edge of the line. And you, just, you end up going back and forth to keep the line straight, and they're not perfectly straight, they're a little bit wonky in places, but you end up going back and forth to tidy them up, but eventually you do come out with some nice straight lines that from a distance on the tabletop look nice and straight. So there you go, it's not that hard. A little bit fiddly back and forth. <clears throat> but that's the thing that you never see on things like the Warhammer TV, TV videos or other people's video builds, or even on mine, because I never really show it. When you're painting any kind of straight edge freehand, you always do one color, then the next color, and then it goes like that. So you have to go back and do the first colour again, and then you overdo that, so you have to go back with the second colour. And you end up doing this backwards and forwards to get a nice straight line, so it's always fudging it. There are some people, I'll zoom out again, there are some people who can just do a straight line like that perfectly, and I hate them, because I just hate them, because it's not natural. So, uh, panic over, oh there we go, Cy Reynolds, is, is 2,000 lines of code, he says, panic over, recovered it, working on an encryption algorithm for work, IBM, as you know, Fox, not MI6 this time. Damn. Nearly had access to all the secrets there. Uh, Interzone is in, hi Interzone. Uh, Thermonuclear Bob Bobbington says, I'm never really here, or am I? Hmm. Is it real or just a dream? There's nothing that is in between. There you go. Uh, nobody's still got that reference. It's a really, really vague reference that you would have heard once in the thing that I'm referencing and probably not paid attention. But you would have heard two different actors say it. There's a clue. It's a really crap clue. It's one line of dialogue in a thing and you would have heard, if you'd, you probably would have heard, or you may have heard, two different actors say the same line. None of you have got any idea of it. I'll tell you at the end. If you remind me, I'll tell you later. Right, so... Uh, I'm kind of coming down from my hyper spate now. I do apologise. I do waffle on dead... I mean, I know I waffle. 
I don't know, I get excited sometimes. And the reason I'm excited is, like I say, is Aviad's had his prizes, his stream boss prizes. And I've not watched the video yet, but it's just like two huge boxes. <sighs> Massive. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move these out of the way. Uh, because we need to do the trim now. Do, 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 do. So I will keep an eye on the time. Um, if you've not watched one of these before, usually about halfway through, we'll do some sticky giveaways and that. I need to put my my messy place mat down. My messy cutting mat. I have a messy cutting mat that I use so I can keep my my nice tidy mat nice and tidy. I don't want to get my nice cutting mat all filthy. Uh, and I don't know if it looks any different today, but I've added some, I've got this jaunty angle, I look like I'm kind of painting uphill. Um, I've added some extra lighting up top, there's some extra LED lights and it makes everything a little bit brighter. So I've not quite got the hang of the colour balance yet, we're looking a little, I don't know, a little, little bright. I need to take the email address off. There we go, that's better. Uh, Invasion stripes on World War II aircraft weren't really well painted as modellers tend to do. No, real real life will invasion straps on the World War II stuff were hand painted often. Or they were masks sometimes. I will be doing, when this is all finished and done, there will be weathering and chipping on these stripes. I'll be chipping back the black uh, with a light yellow colour. So they're not going to be that pristine. And there is more shading to do on here. Uh, JS Ido says, good morning Fox and Friends. Good morning JS Ido. Lynn says, congrats Aviad for winning. Yes, who will be the next stream boss? Who can say? Right, so anyway, shut up, Fox. Do some damn work. Now, today, I'm going to debut debut a device that was made for me, my dad. I've been using this today. Uh, dad, Mike Mountain, in chat, one of your mods, likes making devices, and he made me a couple of things. Aside from the fact that he made me the best wet palette ever, which is this one. It's a thumb palette. I've not had a chance to use it yet, because I need to do some proper figure painting. I've not a chance to use this, but he's made me this thumb palette, which is a wet palette you put on your thumb and you can have it there ready when you're painting dudes. I love that. Painting dudes. Da, da, da. There you go. Uh, he made this one as well, this little little wet palette. Which is dead twee. Now, I've got a proper wet palette. I've got it in a sandwich box here. And it's dead big. And it kind of gets in the way. So I was using this this morning, thinking when I'm doing this filming, if I use this little twee one, it's a bit less... It's a bit less hassle for me having this on the way. And we're only going to be painting mostly silver today, so it doesn't matter. I'm not going to have to replace the paper or anything like that. So let's get going. So we're going to start with, of course, some lead belcher. Give it a good shake. Give it a good shake. Shaking, shaking, shaking. So I need to get some of this off. Onto the vet palette. I need my little helmet of seeing as well. Mm, 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 mm. Go for a corner so I'm not covering the whole papers. I tend to like put my paint right in the middle of the wet palette and then wonder why I've got like a wet palette full with just one colour. It's because I'm special. And I've got to tell you, I have tried, I have really, really tried using the Citadel palette books, you know, these things. I've tried using these, the palette pads. I like using them to make glazes and thinned washes with shades and stuff, but for actual painting, I can't use them. They just dry out. It just dries out too fast, and I can't be doing with that. It just dries out too damn fast. So how Duncan? And that's the other thing. Duncan's there and he's painting some some big massive figure, and he's got one little blob. But it's let's like, say he's painting the uh, the Great Unclean one. It's this model about this big, and he's painting it all with like the, the, the Death Guard green or what have you. And it, when he's finished that first base coat of whatever green it is, he pulls away and you've got his palette there with his little patch of green like that. And it's like, no, I'd have the whole thing covered in that. There's no way it can be that tidy. I think he has another palette off to the side that you don't know about. I think that's how he does it. <sighs> right, so let's get painting, shall we? Is that palette made of tin, says Jess? I don't know. It's made of plastic card. 100% styrene. Doo -doo -doo. Dad likes making things. Not your dad. Dad likes making his bits and bobs. He's also given me a little uh, little rack for drying brushes. And of course, the most important thing he's given me, which I can't get out because it's hidden away in the corner, is a thing for all my glues and things sitting, which is brilliant. Right, so we're going to do some trim now. And all we're going to be doing here is literally just getting the lead belcher onto all the trim pieces on these little puppies. Now, it's not a big problem if I go wonky up the edge, who were uh, matron. Uh, do I need to zoom? I'll zoom in a little bit. Kush. 
So I'll move the camera in a little bit for you because it's a bit far away, isn't it? Just see where I can put it down a bit. You don't need to be quite so far. I need you not to be right in my face. I need to change the focus now as well. Oh, the focus. Always with the focus. Do, 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 do. And the camera will stop wobbling when I stop using the keyboard and things. Uh, let's have a look. There we go. Right, so. Still in the centre of the screen? No, not quite. Let me move that there. There we go. That's in the centre. Da, da, da. Right, so. Yes, I'm painting around all these trim pieces. Now, I'm not too bothered. If I go a bit doolally and I splodge some up on the other parts, like up on the side of the hazard straps or something like that, as long as it's a tiny splodge, I'm not too fussed. Because there will be a shade that goes over this metallic, a couple of shades. And what you tend to find is when you do a shade, you do tend to tidy up all the little edges anyway where you've splodged. So I'm not too fussed if I'm not, you know, I'm not going to spend hours trying to catch this edge here perfectly. I don't need to. Because like I say, shade will hide a lot of that. It'll just give it the depth. So that's cool. So I'll just crack on over shake your hands today, as always. Because I've only had two litres of coffee. And my paint's a bit thin. Nee, 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 nee. Now I've got to try and get this fleur de lis thing painted. Let's see if I can be neat here. It's the only time I actually go quiet is when I'm concentrating. And even then I'm not that quiet. Hee! <laughs> So you're probably not going to learn much today because I won't be showing you anything that you've not done yourself. As in, you know, painting lead belcher and things. Are we in focus there? I hope we're in focus. And let me know if my painting hand, my brush hand, just gets in the way all the time. Because I tried to get the camera up above so you don't just see the back of my painting hand. It's actually quite hard because I've got the camera on that side. It's not really the best side to have the camera on, but... Hey, what are you going to do? And I know I just said I'm not going to try and catch these edges, but I'm trying to catch these edges. Edges? We don't need no stinking edges, senor. You see all that? Where's my hand? Tell you what, let me move it closer in, but above. Ready? We're going to do some moving. Hang on. I can't move that. I can't move that. I can move that. How is that? Is that better? Can you, you can see a bit better now, can't you? Right, let's... Move me centre point. Oh, I've moved me centre point now. I don't know. How to go off that. We've got. Uh, we'll go off. We'll go off that bit. There we go. We'll use that as a rough centre point. Not centre parks. That's something different. There we go. A bit better. You can see a bit better now. Hopefully. Speedy Q8. Hi guys. We'll be in and out a bit. Got my brother here and nipping out for Sunday dinner. Bit shortly. Oh, <gasps> Sunday dinner. Oh, lamb or beef or both? Oh, I'm hungry now. I'm really hungry now. It doesn't take much to get me really hungry, I've got to be honest. Okay, so I'm just going to really carefully try to get around these edges. I will actually try and get these edges. Why not? Let's do it. But if I do splodge, I'm not too fussed, like I say, because... No doubt there'll be null oil and agrax urshay going on these edges. Anyway, and that will that will clean stuff up. Tony Blackwell says, need coffee, be right back. Need coffee, it's a biological imperative. Everybody should drink coffee. Although I have started drinking tea lately. Ever since I discovered Barry's tea. <laughs> now if you're trying to do this kind of fine edge work some handy hints for you use a brush that's bigger than you think you're going to need don't use a small tiny brush because you're trying to paint a small tiny thing and also if you can thin your paint a little bit more than normal only a tiny bit just so it flows a bit better and you get some more control a little bit more control over it 
if it's nice and if it's just at the right thinness if that's even a word it will tend to sort of suck towards edges and do some of the work for you and also you get a smoother finish as well let's just move this wet palette around a bit look dad your device is getting some usage Yee! now apologies i don't know what's happening in chat I, I did doing this just mean i can't actually see what's happening in chat so you'll have to bear with me and entertain yourselves. I know you can. Now when you're painting lead belcher as a base, you do tend to do, for best results, you do tend to do at least, as Duncan would say, two thin coats. However, this isn't going to be nice and neat and tidy. This is going to be a scruffy thing. So we'll see how it looks after one coat. It might be dull enough as it is. Catch that edge there. And thankfully, now I'm putting this metal trim on, it's tidying up the edges of my hazard stripes which are a little if you pardon the pun haphazard wah, wah, wah. you see what I did there you see what I did there mm. <coughs> excuse me I should get paid I should get paid for that so there we go so you can see I don't know if you can see on camera but that edge that I put round there on the edge of that bit of trim it's a bit wibbly wobbly around the round the you know the edge between the hazard stripes and the metal you probably can't see but it doesn't matter it does not matter at all because when we put a wash on here a null null wash it'll just grab to that edge and it will make it just perfect so don't worry too much and don't bust a gut trying to get the perfect finish perfect straight edges when you know there's going to be a wash over your metallics or any any color you're going to do because you, your weathering and your washes will hide everything now i need to i will need to pay under here At some point, just try and get. I've got very shaky hands today. I do apologise. So there we go. That's that bit done. Quite pleased with that. It's quite nice. So we'll do another one. Uh, Toast face. That's a great name. Toast face says, "Hi Fox. I have a set of Winsor and Newton Galeria brushes or Galeria brushes." Do I need a Series 7 in my life? Yes. Yes, you do. The Galleria brushes. Have, have I got, I've, I've got some. I just don't know if I've got them here. Uh, I've got some. Because I've got some Graduate and I've got some Galleria or Galleria brushes. There we go. I've got a few of them. There's one. Galleria. I, this is a very old one. That I use this for putting pigments on. So, uh, Windsor & Newton Galleria or Galleria. I've got quite a few of those. Uh, they are very good brushes. Uh, but yes, you need it wins in Newton Series 7. Although having said that, they are brilliant brushes. I've got the triple O and the double O. And they are beautiful brushes. Uh, they're very fine. They're like the best of the best. I've had this for about a year now. and been using it. And it's still mint. Just You know, I've looked after it. I wash it with brush soap and everything else. And I keep it in this plastic tube. If I can get it back in the hole. Um, and I don't tend to use them that often. Because I don't tend to use really tiny fine detail brushes that often because like I was saying a minute ago often when you're doing little tiny fine details you actually want to use a slightly bigger brush than you think you'll need because logically you might think you need a really fine detail brush for this stuff but you don't Ooh. oh splodge luckily it went onto the bit I'm painting anyway never mind uh, but you don't I can use this this is the army painter regiment brush really nice uh, and it's great for painting these kind of details. Whenever you're trying to do some kind of precision painting like this, there is a point at which a tiny, tiny detail, precision sort of detail brush is what you want. But for stuff like this where it's, it's not that small, you want to be able to take advantage of a thinned paint flowing on the edges like I said before but also you want to have a, a, a brush size that means you've got a reasonable reservoir of paint 
If I was using a Series 7 like a double O or triple O here, I'd be reloading the brush every five seconds because it doesn't hold much paint. I've got some paint on there, you see. I've tidied that up in a minute. No biggie. But because I've got this regiment brush, it's actually slightly bigger. It can hold more paint. I'm not having to reload it quite as often. Now you might think my painting style is a bit cack handed. It's not normally this bad, but I'm having to keep a distance away from the from the thing I'm painting because I'm on, I've got the camera there. Normally I'm quite up close and personal with whatever I'm painting. So if I look a bit spongy with my style, it's because with my eyesight, painting things from a long way away is not the best idea. But I get there. I do it for you. Nee, nee, nee. And we'll have a look at the chat in a minute and see what you're all up to. Remember, if you need to ask me a question, put it in big fat capital letters. And even if I don't see it right now, at least when I go and scroll through the chat, I can see it because it'll stand out. Or you can do a super chat or, you know, send me an email. Whichever works best for you is good for me. So how is everybody? Let me know what you're all working on. Probably exactly the same thing you're working on on Wednesday when I did the other live streams, I would suspect. But, tell me anyway. That's how these things work. Mm -mm -mm. It's cold here today. I actually have my hoodie on all day. Uh, just until I started filming. Because it's actually really cold this morning. I was like, oh, I might even have to put the central heating on. I didn't. I was like, no, that would just be really girly if I did that. Let's just, just brave it. It's not that cold, Fox. I do go quiet when I'm painting, don't I? I do tend to shut up. Well, a little bit. Apart from like now, obviously, because I'm talking now. Yeah, so painting little details like the very edge of this trim. In a way, it'd be easier with a smaller brush because you've got a little bit more control. But at the same time, I'd be reloading the brush every five seconds. Whereas this regiment brush can just hold enough to keep it going for a little while. Although I do tend to reload quite often just to make sure I've not got paint drying up on the on the bristles. Because that affects the quality of the paint you put on the model. Did anybody get the reference to Ket Vectors? I bet nobody did, did they? Uh, Andy McLeish, afternoon, Herr Fox. Herr Fox. See what we're doing in chat. I need to make sure if anybody's got the answer yet. Uh, I sent you one two ages ago after the competition. Uh, JSI Day has been sent a wet, little wet palette by Mike Mountain. I nearly died when I heard stinky edges. We don't need no. Oh, excuse me, I'm burping. We don't need no stinking edges, senor. Uh, uh, JSI Day says, Wow, thank you so much, Mike, but I did not receive it. Aww. I've got a slow roasting leg of lamb in the oven put in four and a half hours ago, says T Paul at Team Inept. You've always got something cooking, you have. Has it got like a ton of chilli powder on it as well to make it hot and deadly? Uh, I'm not cooking today, says James Lorimer, unfortunately. Uh, Mike Mountain, made up fox. Made up fox. Made up fox. What? I lost the reference there. Lindipple Lol Fox. Mm -mm -mm. I've uh, read that one. And then McLeish. Ooh, I nearly forgot this was a thing. I forgot to post up about it in advance. Which is just me being special. Uh, Aviad Badar says, Doing 90% of my painting with Windsor and Newton Series 7, 1 and 2. If you can keep a good tip and care for the brush, there's already... There's really no point in anything smaller. Yeah, pretty much. I say I've got the... Oh, the double O and triple O, and they are brilliant for really tiny details. I do use them. 
I'm curious, Mike, what competition did I win? Okay. It says JS Idaho. Oh, talking to Mike about his uh, thing. Of course it's cold that you're in Manchester, and I know plenty of tough girls, says Paul at Team Inept. It's nothing to do with the... It's just... Shut up. Southerner. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm building a Vickers light tank by a Polish company, Mirage Hobby. It's surprisingly good, although I wouldn't recommend it for a novice, says Tony Blackwell. Is that a regiment brush, says regiment, uh, says uh, Jeff Landis? Yes, it's a uh, the Army Painter Regiment. I've got quite a few. I love these Army Painter brushes. I've got, I've got a monster as well here. I've got the monster as well. Monster. All the, all the labels coming off that. I've noticed Fox's painting, he gets quieter. Yeah, pretty much. I shut up. Uh, Frankie Ghost Hobble is preparing his Gene Stealer Cult's Goliath for Primer. That's why he's asking if I've made one. Yeah, haven't so far. Uh, so what else is people working on? The brisket in the fridge has chilli sauce and stuff on it, though, says Paul. Yes. He says, no, his lamb is red wine, garlic, rosemary and lemon. Mm, I'll be around in five minute, ten minutes. Going Philo is in. Welcome. Da, 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 da. Mr. Gav is working on a Hobby Boss 135th BA20 armoured car. Is that Gav? Mr. Gav as in Gav. I think Gav. Hello, Gav. Uh, working on a Hobby Boss 135th BA20 armoured car. Like in this Games Workshop stuff, though. Have almost pulled the trigger on some Blood Angels to relieve, relive my childhood. Yeah, do it. It's just great stuff. To, they're great fun to build. They're easy to build and great fun to paint. I mean, I wouldn't like to try and brush paint like a proper model. Like a plane or a tank. As, well, maybe a tank, but... For Warhammer, I don't know. It just feels right to do things differently on a Warhammer kit. Uh, Lee Gallop is in. Welcome, Lee. Merlin's Muse. Pass his coffee around. Morning all. Welcome. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Vamp are in. Lee Gallop. Hey, Fox. Sorry I'm late. I forgot. Sorry, I forgot to post up about it. Uh, James Lauren. Well, thanks, Lee. It was during Destiny last night. My feelings were poked at. Lol. Uh... Finally started my Sazabi last night, says Cy si si Reynolds. The box is fecking huge. Yes, it is. The amount of sprues and nubs made me cry just looking at them. Yeah, I've got one today. Uh, Mike Mountain. I was thinking, is that the Gav? I don't know. I don't want to say out loud who the Gav is for obvious reasons, but I, think, I don't know if it is. I don't know. Is it the Gav that we, that me and Mike both know Gav? You can answer that question without giving too much away. Uh, right, anyway, let's crack on. What was I going to say? I was going to say something. Never mind. Uh, a bit more of this metallic shenanigans. Do, 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 do. <coughs> so, let's see what we're up to. What am I doing now? I've got to do the underside of these parts because I need to get this bit done. Because you can see in there. You can see that. So, what I need to paint now are these bits here. You'll see. Am I on camera? Yes, I'm on camera. Yeah, Warhammer kits are just kind of, or Games Workshop kits, they're designed to be brush painted, so they have nice edges and relief for the details, like this bit here. Lots of extreme relief that looks in scale and works on a Warhammer kit. If it was a real tank, it'd be look a bit over the top and OTT if it was like a realistic vehicle, a real world thing. But on a Warhammer kit, it just works. Perfect for brushwork. This is going to take me a while to paint all this trim on these guys, isn't it? It's going to take a significant amount of time, I think. <laughs> Try not to put my big size nine thumb into the paint I've just painted. That would be a bad thing. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I might do, because uh, it's going to take a while to, you know, if I was doing all three, what I might do uh, is just work on one for you guys. Because I can do the rest off camera. I don't need to work on all three. At the same time. The only problem with that is, of course, I get so far and then I forget what I've done when I come to the tomb. I'm like, oh, how did I do that now? Can't remember. Oh, where can I handle? Mm. 
I've been thinking about uh, the uh, the goof and the Char Zaku knights that I'm going to have to do. And I'm thinking for Char Zaku, I want it to be nice and, and a bit tidy, you know what I mean? Like a bit shiny and awesome looking because it's Char Zaku. I'm thinking for that one, I might have to do airbrush jobbies. Because I'm going to have a nice, clean, as Gunpla builders will say, internal frame. Uh, and it's going to be kind of shiny and clean. So I'm thinking for that one, I may have to get the airbrush out. Because this was all going to be just brush painted fun. But I'm thinking, yeah, for Charles, I may need to get serious with that one. Oops, dropping. So, yeah. So I need to film a painting of an Imperial Knight. Now the Zaku would have been brilliant because it was so weathered, but the Goof won't be quite as weathered. So I'm thinking what I might need to do, what I might do, <clears throat> is uh, when I've done my nights, if the Goof isn't going to come out that weathered, when I finish my nights for my army, just build a fourth one purely for filming and then obviously once I've done it I can sell it but just maybe build a fourth one just to film so I can do like a how to paint Imperial Knights video or something like that perhaps is anyone doing Destiny 1 on PS3 I don't think anybody plays with Destiny 1 anymore do they I shall give you five minutes. Five minutes for somebody to get that quote that I did at the start of the, in the in the chat, which was something like initialising ket vectors. You've got five minutes to guess it. If somebody guesses it in the next five minutes, I'll send you a sticker. If not, I'll tell you what it was. It's not that cool, really. It's just I just wrote it out and thought, there you go. That's an interesting thing. Nobody will get it. Well, it's gone a bit messy in some places. But like I said before, I'm not too fussed if I'm a little bit messy here and there. Because there's a lot of tidying up will go on. And it's the kind of stuff you don't normally see when you watch it, like a how to paint video. You don't normally see the person filming it and doing it, doing all their clean up and tidy up. Bit of water. Always thin your paints, dude. Always thin your paints. Ah, oh, fudge. There you go. A little bit of splodge. Not a biggie. Because it can be cleaned up. It'll probably get hidden with the shade anyway. And even if it doesn't, I can clean it up later. So no big problem. The main thing is just if you know if you make a mistake, don't panic. Nothing is not fixable. There's no such thing as not fixable. See, in an ideal world, if you're doing the proper games workshop way, you put your base colour down like the orange. You do your yellow and your black stripes and your metallic colours, and then you do a shade. But because I wanted to do dry brushing to get this kind of highlight areas. I can't do the dry brushing like that when everything else was painted. It just wouldn't have happened. So, yeah, I kind of had to to do a compromise there, which is why I'll have to, a little bit of touch-ups to do here and there. Uh, sorry, Reynolds. And in Oh, yes, I had the choice of which is sent to Fox, the Cesarbi or the new. I had to keep the Cesarbi. I'm going to build it open hatch. I mean, I have to, says Cy Reynolds. Yeah. What's chat doing? What was the quote? Says Lee Gallup. The quote was initializing ket vectors. Uh, no, it's not Halo. No, it's not a Gundam series. No, it's not Doctor Who. 
I put it in the chat at the start. It's something like, it's right at the very start, but I think it's something like initializing Keter vectors. Not Family Guy. I can't stand Family Guy. Oh, God, no. I wouldn't do a quote from that. Never understood this thing for Family Guy. People say it's brilliant. It's like, I just don't find it funny at all. Never enjoyed it. I'm like, eh, no. Never liked it. I'm going to paint this thing that the gun goes on silver because of the reasons. Just because I am. Now this bit I'm painting here is actually a magnet. It's a magnet. And how do magnets work? Nobody knows. It's like the tides. No one has any understanding of these things. Well, if you're an American senator anyway. No one understands such things. I can't believe there was actually an American, I think it was a senator, a congressman, who was anti-science in some debate or some argument, and he's like, blah, 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 science is nonsense, no, you shouldn't trust science, yada, yada, yada. Scientists don't even know how the tides work. To which the entire scientific community said, um, I think you'll find, I, just, I don't want to you know, be that guy, but I think you'll find... We kind of know how the tides work, and we have done for many, many hundreds of years. You idiot. Makes me laugh. Many things make me sad in this world. Scientific illiteracy is one of them. And people have a fear of science. It's like... You know... The irrational fear of science is like, okay, well, if you're afraid of science... Just stop doing everything you currently do in your life. If you don't like science, turn your phone off, turn your computer off. Disconnect your internet, turn the telly off. Stop taking any medication you've got. Don't eat anything, don't wear any clothes. You know, empty your house of all the things. Just makes me sad. And I've just noticed this little handrail isn't quite stuck in properly but never mind it's too late now Ooh, shake your hand shake a shake a hand oh dropping dropping that's that bit painted. Bizarre, it took me longer to paint the little handrail. I did like a flat area of the entire pauldron. Just get a little detail there. Okay, that's that one done. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I need to paint on there. That's going to be a bronze colour. Uh, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. No other details I need to paint metallic on there, I don't think. Okay, cool. That's good. Let's do some of these now. Uh, let's do a couple of these. Uh, yeah, there we go. Right, give my brush a rinse. Uh, let's have a look. How are we doing? Anybody got that quote yet? Uh, family Guy, no. Uh, what about Rick and Morty? Never watched it. Andromeda, no. Not Star Trek, not Andromeda. Uh, not Red Dwarf, not Hitchhikers. Uh, I missed the question. Anyone care to repeat it, says Cy Reynolds. I mentioned uh, one of my first comments in chat was something like, getting ready soon, just uh, um, initia initialising Ket vectors. It's not quite an exact perfect quote, but what is that from? There are idiots who swear the earth is flat, says Merlin's Muse. Yes, and idiots is the word. God can fix it all in the snap of a finger. Says Lee Gallup. Well, he could. It doesn't exist, so he can't. Uh, kept vectors from quantum mechanics? Uh, nope. Uh, Heidi Beard. Am I showing my beard all over the all over the telly? Am I getting my, my face in, in shot? I don't know where the camera is, you see. I can't see a, the screen. Uh, not a Stargate. Not Spaceballs. You're not going to. You're not going to get it, are you? Okay. I shall tell you. I shall tell you. Hang on, let me have a swig of coffee. I shall tell you. 
it's from Destiny, the original Destiny game. Uh, when you first get your sparrow, I think, the ghost goes into the machine and says, I'll, just, I'll do some stuff. And he's like initializing cat vectors, doing all this. And then he, you have a sparrow. Or I think it's a sparrow or communications terminal or something. It's from Destiny. There you go. And the reason is I gave a clue and said, you've heard two actors say it because it was... Um, what's his name? Did the, the readings first. Forgot his name. Tyrion... Uh, not, uh, what's his name? The guy that did the ghost first and then was replaced by Nolan North. You know who I mean, I can't remember his name. Anyway, two different acts have done the same role, so. Let's do it on camera, shall we? I told you it wasn't very exciting. It was just a fun little thing. Dee dee dee. Peter Dinklage, that's it. The Dinklebot. That then later wasn't, I need to put this on a stick, don't I? Hang on. Mounting now, sir. There we go. It's left a little easier. Yeah, so normally you do like two coats of this, but I'm not wanting it to look like shiny, shiny metal. It look needs to look old. And, I mean, if a goo, if a, a Zaku is a utilitarian, mass-produced kind of crappy Russian tank of the mobile suit world, a mobile worker is like a I don't know. It's a forklift. It's a it's a wheelbarrow. It's a It's the kind of thing you see on a building site or in a cargo, uh, <clears throat> on a dockyard or something. Not looked after. Nobody cares if it's clean or not. You know, a Zaku pilot might take pride in his Zaku. But a guy that works in the docks doesn't take care, doesn't take pride in his forklift, does he? I know that's not in focus, by the way. I know this is out of focus because it's up on a stick, but I need the stick. I need my stick. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine this is very exciting while I do this because I'm not really saying much. I hope you guys are entertaining yourselves in chat because I can't really... I can't see the chat, so I can't really think of anything to talk about. One handy tip, by the way. If you are trying to paint like a fine edge, just like you can see there, the, the edge of this, I know it's not in focus, but like the edge of this trim. Um, one thing I've found is that I need a piece of foam. Uh, I need something to jam that in. There we go. One thing I found is if you don't want to use a tiny, tiny brush, uh, who replaced Dinklebot? Nolan North. Because or was it Nolan North or was it um, uh, uh, what's his name from? Uh, I'm just forgetting all the names now. Not Nolan North. The other guy. The one that was in. Firefly and uh, uh, anyway, uh, I was gonna. Oh, I can't remember any names. Brain's gone. I'm, not, I'm just gonna stop talking now. Yes, if you want painting like fine edges, like like these edges around the trim here, the very fine sort of horizontal edges, you could use a really fine brush and carefully do all that. But what I find is the best thing to do. And I'll demonstrate it with a big brush so you can see it. Uh, but it's not really the kind of brush you're going to use. Instead of getting a really fine brush, let's say you've got, let's put the lid on that for a second. Let's say uh, you've got something and you, let's say this is a re relief detail and you want to paint this edge. So you've got a piece here, you've painted this. Da, 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 and let me get the other one, hang on. <clears throat> let's say this is like on a, a piece of armour and you wanted to, you've painted this bit with your brush and you want to get this edge. 
<clears throat> now you could use, and let's imagine this was like that big. You could use the tip of a very fine brush and just try and really carefully do it. What's easier is to just use the normal brush, a bigger brush, and use the properties of the brush itself. So for example, if I want to paint a really fine line or a, a fine edge, <clears throat> what I can do is I can get, this isn't to scale, but I can get the brush like that and flatten it till the tip of the brush, if I don't on camera, flatten it till the tip of the brush actually goes to the edge I want and then drag it along like that. So instead of getting a fine brush and trying to carefully paint this, which means you go up all the side there, let's say there's, a, there's an edge here, so I'm trying to paint that. If, if this makes sense, I'm trying to paint this lip. Instead of going like this, get a big brush and just squish it till it goes to the edge and then drag it along. And that way you get a bit here and you get this edge. You could also do that and have it this way and flatten a brush. But it's just, I find it easier just to, to flatten it and use the edge so you've got like a splayed out spatula shape and just keep it the same pressure and it'll stay the same width and that's how you get nice <clears throat> reasonably crisp edges when you're doing things like small detailed trim and stuff like that that was not to scale and it wasn't a very good demonstration so yeah but you get the idea you get the idea uh nathan fillion that's the one yes it's nathan fillion i can't remember his damn name uh nathan fillion who was it nathan fillion i think it was yeah it was i think or was it Nolan? I can't remember. I know it was Nolan North because Nathan Fillion does K6. So you've actually got Nathan Fillion and Nolan North in the same game. Then again, name a game that Nolan North isn't in. Hey! Now I've not painted the inside of this trim. Because I'll do that in a bit when a bigger brush. Because on the inside of these panel part, the inside of these armour panels, it's not so important. I mean, you, you can see them just about. So I need them to be at least the right colour. But I'm not going to go to town, you know, do lots of careful detailing stuff on the insides. You might just see a bit of it through the, through the mechanical parts of the leg. So I just need to make sure there's at least some paint on there. So I'll do these little bits of trim here. Uh, in fact, no, I'll leave those till later because I can catch them later. But I'll do these bits here. But I'll do that later on <clears throat> with a bigger brush. Excuse me. And there goes my voice. I'll be clearing my throat again every 10 minutes. Fantastic. So what I need to do is get another stick. Because I've got many of these to paint. Doodle -doo -doo, but I've only got two to paint. Two for this dude. So I've done one. Let's do the other one. Now again, there might not be the neatest job, but you might look at this and think, well, you've got a few rough edges there. But again, like I said before, there'll be shades to come on these metallic parts and other weathering and washes and things, and that will hide a lot of misdemeanors. So if you are doing a weathered vehicle, bear in mind that weathering can hide a lot of your gaffes and goofs and errors. It's one of the reasons I don't tend to do... Oh, I've not done that bit. Hang on. I've done the fleur de lis on there, I? I'll let it dry for a minute. One of the reasons I don't do nice shiny things, like shiny cars and shiny fighter planes and things, is because when it comes to painting, I'm just not that good. I'm not good enough to do it without having loads of little gaffes and goofs and mistakes that I, I can then go and hide in weathering. But the main reason is it's more fun. I like weathered things. I don't like clean, shiny factory stuff. It's boring. I like to do weathering. It's just an added bonus that it makes it possible to hide things. So you don't have to panic too much about everything being spot on and perfect. I mean, it's nice when you paint something and it comes out spot on. But it's not always that that happens. It's one of those things that you learn to appreciate when it happens, but not to expect as if it's going to happen. It may happen, it may not. I have days when everything just goes to pot and everything comes out looking terrible. And I can't paint for my life. We all have those days. Some more than others. <laughs> I mean, some days more than others. Not some people more than others. I wasn't trying to denigrate anybody. Uh, mini, 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 mini. 
So not a lot of excitement here today on this show. We're painting silver things. Yes, silver things. Always good. A little bit of paint on there. There we go. Let's see if I can get it around the edge. You'll see me use different methods to paint around these edges. I'll, I'll use the side of the brush or the tip of the brush or anything like that. But I'll always kind of use that splaying technique. Where you kind of, you paint on the flat but you kind of, you, you push it so it goes over the lip. And it doesn't always work. Like it's got a, a bit out there but it's not too bad. But more often than not it kind of just catches over the, you're just pushing it over the edge of that lip. So it's not foolproof. It's not perfect every time. It's knock, knocking the camera, of course. My apologies. I always put the camera where my head needs to be. Or rather, I always put my head where the camera is. Which is worse. Now that needs to go there. Where's that? Okay. Now let's see if we can paint this fleur de lis kind of detail. People are talking about telescopes. Yes. I'd love a telescope. But I've got nowhere to telescope from. My brother used to have a telescope set up in the garden shed that he used to do is all his telescoping things. Uh, but that shed is now a pile of wood at the end of the garden. At the end of the garden that we left to go wild. It's a pile of kindling and wood and creatures and destruction. And no doubt, of course, spiders. <clears throat> But there's nothing nicer than just going out and looking up at the night sky. Many years ago, I was on holiday in France, in the south of France. And it was the first time in my life that I've been anywhere where you could actually see the Milky Way, the, the arm of the Milky Way. Because, you know, living in Manchester and its environs, Hello, somebody did something. Uh, uh, Asari has subscribed. Thank you very much, A. Hope I pronounced that right, Asari. Uh, thank you for subscribing. You've taken a little bit of my health off. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, where I'm, you, you, you know, you can't see, you can't see the night sky. You, you see stars, but I'd never seen the Milky Way. And. Uh, it was amazing to sit back in this garden, this house we were staying in, get a lawn chair and just sit back in this garden, put the chair back and just stare up at the sky, which was just a, a, a jewellery box of stars and galaxies. And set in the middle was this beautiful sort of, I'm trying to think of some really some Carl Sagan-y words here, this beautiful sort of just balustrade of bright light which was the Milky Way the, the the center of the Milky Way and it was like wow this is amazing and I even you know with the naked eye I could see like Andromeda and other galaxies it's like you know how have I never seen this before it was amazing I was amazed because I'd never seen it I'd never ever seen the Milky Way it's the best thing ever it was good times never seen it since either because you just can't live in a city. There's just no. I'd have to go somewhere outside the city, and even then, most places in the UK, unless you go really far out, you know, you're kind of stuck with where you can go to see anything like that. But if you have access to clear skies, I do recommend just, as they say on Sky at Night, go outside and get looking up.
It's quite frustrating not being able to read the chat at the same time. Because I know you're all looking after yourselves and keeping yourselves amused and stuff, but it's kind of... I'm missing out on what's going on. I mean, these live streams are really more just about you hanging with each other and I just happen to be here, I think. <laughs> more than uh, you guys hanging out with me. that one done uh, what else do I need to do on this fellow I've got his feet, his little things that go on his feet let's have a quick look at the chats uh, what's the chat been doing ghost was north, Nolan north who was south ha -ha. let's have a look Lindipple says, I've been watching the volcano in Hawaii since May. Now it's over. I'm still watching this channel. Uh, but then she's a geologist at heart. Talking about Fillion North makes me want to watch that Uncharted fan film that Fillion did. It's actually really good. The sort of little live action. It looks a bit old, but... Mm. It's really good. I love Nathan Fillion. I love geology in school. I did geology in school. I really enjoyed it. Um, And then McLeish was going to put some, some uh, paint onto his Mustang. But Weathers put the kibosh on that, he says. Yeah. Right, I'm missing some parts. What have we got? Oops. We need some feet. Some feet parts. Uh, and I think... That's the only other place that has any silvery trim. A silvery trim. I need two more sticky things. It's brown and sticky. Stick. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's a crap joke. The Fox, what night variant are you going to use for Charles Zaku? Uh, I don't know. I've got the Avengers, the um, Renegade set, so it's whatever I'm able to build out of that, basically. I've used... Um, I don't know enough about the knights. I've got a Knight Errant as the Zaku. So whichever one costs the most points, I guess, and whichever one I've got the bits to build, I'll do as Charles. It's not going to be one of the new uh, big, massive night kits because I, I, I bought one night kit on its own and then I got the renegade thing with two nights so it's two of the traditional nights I'm going to change the focus on this camera because it's out isn't it because I'm up here right let me just adjust the focus a bit there you go it's a bit better uh, yeah so I, I didn't I didn't buy any of the like the new new nights I had to kind of save some money so uh osric 9000 i was camping in mongolia a few years ago and i could see every star in the sky wow tony blackwell i really have to learn that sometimes a model has to be put to one side to dry i tried to learn that and then i found the joys of that hair dryer yeah it's <laughs> yeah I have no patience. When I'm painting stuff just for myself, yeah, I'm hair drying everything. There'll be times on videos when I've said, right, well, that's had a few hours to dry. No, it's been hair dried for five minutes and now I'm filming the next bit. That's how it works a lot of times. I've just moved my centre spot, haven't I? Idiot. Right, there we go. Right, is that in focus, children? Can everybody see everything? It looks like it's in focus. Yeah, it's jolly good. Uh, yeah, so I didn't go out and buy any of the special, the, the new night kits, because I can't afford, like, three nights at 90 quid each. But I could afford the one night I bought a year ago, which I've made into the Zaku, and then the Renegade set, which is basically two nights for 120 quid. I could afford that. So I thought, I'll get that, and I'll just build two. So it's whichever I can build out of the parts. Now, I do have all... 
the first one I made was a Night Warden kit, so it has all the weapons in the world. But I made it as a Knight Errant. So whatever I've got left over in that, I can combine all that with whatever I've got in the uh, in the um, Renegade Knights kit, which I think is basically the kit itself. I think is two bog standard knights. It's not the Night Warden kit. It's just two bog standard knight kits, and you get an extra sprue, which is the extra weapons that you would get like on the in the Warden kit. So I'm not sure which ones I can make, but we'll see. We will see. It's weird. I keep forgetting I've got it because I'll be like looking around my room and looking at my stash and be like, "Holy crap! I've got two more Imperial Knights over there." There's a whole box of knights just brimming with knights. I'd love to just have like somebody make them for me my kits because I've said this before I'm not a bit I'm not there's, there's three types of model maker there's the builder well there's, there's more than three types but roughly simply speaking there's the builder and there's the painter and then there's the, the both the person that does both the building and the painting and loves both steps and in the builder I include things like you know the modder and the scratch builder but I'm just boiling it down to those three the builder the painter and then the both I'm the build. I'm the painter. I'm not the builder. I never have been. I've never really enjoyed the building process at all. And I don't. I don't just mean like on a complex. It's not like I get a complicated kit. And go. Oh god, I'm not having fun now. I mean, even on a simple kit, even like a gumpler or you know, like an imperial knight, which is like thirty pieces and goes together like a dream. Even on simple stuff, I don't enjoy building at all. But it's a necessary part of the of the thing. You can't not do it. So, so even for me, like Imperial Knight, which is not it's a beautiful kit to build because everything just fits. It's perfect. It's like it's like a Bandai kit almost, but with glue required and a bit more seam lineage. But you know, just the simple thing of cutting stuff off sprues and sticking it all together. It's like I don't I don't want, I just want to paint it. I just want to paint it. So like the other week when I had a little bit of free time and I couldn't do anything else I built my Mortarian I put him together uh, and I built the um, Magoth Lord that was very kindly sent to me I built that up didn't paint it again just put it together so that when I do get some free time way way down the line some point uh, that's the wrong one I can't do that one uh, I can just pull it off the shelf I've got Three different. Okay, I've got. Hang on. I've got like multiple. I'm going to paint them all anyway. It doesn't really matter. But I've got different types of little armor here. I've got that one, that one, that one. Oh, hello, uh, Andy McLeish. Uh, oh, thank you very much, Andy. Let's have a look. He says his entire super chat message is nothing, <laughs> but he's donated one pound. Thank you very much for that, Andy. You're very, very kind. For anybody who's wondering, that's what a super chat looks like. That's why I can't possibly miss a super chat chat. Uh, right, so we've got. I've just done a fleur de lis one. As you can see there, little fleur. De, I've not painted that bit. Oh, what an idiot! Hang on. Special. Hang on. I keep missing bits out. Yes, thank you very much, for that Andy. Much appreciated. That's that there. I keep missing details out because I get carried away and I think, oh, I've done it now. I've painted it now. I was painting the yellow on the feet earlier on. I was like, right, I've done that now. I'll move on to the next coat. And then I was like, hang on, I'm only painted off the foot. Idiot. That's what I was saying before about not always using a tiny brush. These are quite small details, but I'm quite happy to use this brush. As long as my paint is thin enough. Because the paint will behave and go where I want. And I don't have to reload it every five seconds. I might splodge a little bit here and there, but again, it's all stuff that will be covered up with a wash later on. Because the one thing you don't want to do is spend ages and ages 
fettle in to get this perfect straight edge between, say, on the silver and the orange. And then go and put a wash over it that then just blurs all that anyway. So a lot of model making is learning where you can not cut corners, but where you don't need to invest a lot of effort. Yes, yeah, so that one's got a fleur de lis on it. That one's got a fleur de lis. This one's got a big arrowhead. And those two have got a fleur de lis. So that one's going to be the the big closey up one that's got all the castellations on the armor. So I need to put those to one side. <clears throat> okay. Right, what I'm going to do is come up to half four. So I'm going to just stop for a moment. I shall pause, have a swig of my tasty beverage, my tasty, tasty beverage. We shall pause momentarily. I think we should do some stickery giveaways and things and stuff and that. So, I think it's a stickery giveaway time type time. I'm going to move my water out there because I need to do my water in a minute. Move my brush and my sticky sticks. <coughs> Excuse me. Because we'll have stuff to put on the table. Right, so let's have a quick look and see what chat has been doing. I'll change the focus back again because I'm not down there anymore. There we go. Right, what has chat been doing? I need to drink some coffee and clear my throat. Fox, I got a Vallejo Model Air starter set. Are the bottles as small in the starter set or are the main bottles bigger? Uh, Vallejo are typically 17 mil, I think. Yeah, 17 mil is a standard Vallejo size. So, why did I mark that? I marked that SB, and I don't actually know why I marked it SB. It meant something. Uh... Uh... Brilliant. Well done, Fox. Well done. Uh, yes, yeah, 17mm is the normal size, so I don't know what size they are in the starter set. <clears throat> I'm definitely a builder, says JS Idaho, because my painting skills are not that great. Just requires practice. The more you do it, the better you get. Simple as that. Uh, it's all a meditation for me. One step to the next. I can easily get lost in the entire process, says Merlin's Muse. I like to build and paint, says Ghost Lyle. I like every aspect of modelling, says Lynn Dipple. Uh, Merlin's Muse says, be right back, dog needs to go out. By go out, you mean poop. Uh, my problem is finishing kits, says Tony Blackwell. Yes. I also like both. I'm terrible at, I'm terry bad at hand painting, but getting good with airbrushing, so there is that, says Jeff, uh, George Flouter. Jeff Landis, I like both too. When I get tired and start to get lazy, I stop building and start painting, and vice versa. Uh, and McLeish at Mac Mountain. Dad just looked in yeah, the 17 mil had a funny feeling they were smaller and that there were bigger bottles. Stickery and stuff, says Lynn. I know Citadel paints get smaller every time they change size. Uh, I don't know what size they are now. They're, uh, like, how about I look at one of the ones in front of me? There's like 30 of them. Uh, how big are these? These are uh, 12 mil. Yeah. I do wish... See, for brush painting, I like this design. I like this shape because you get the reservoir on the top of the lid. You can't knock them over very easily. Uh, and you can. I find that handy. But for anything else, this is great. This kind of shape. And I don't know. Th this shape does have its advantages. Uh, the, the, the design of the lid on the bottom of the, of the... I'll start that again. The design of the hinge on the lid is rubbish. Because that's where your paint cr cr crusts up. The whole thing dries out and you have to buy more. But that actual kind of bottle where you open the lid and you've got a little reservoir of paint has its advantages if you're brush painting kind of has its advantages but i don't know i don't know uh jeff Landis, have you ever washed your brush in your coffee yes uh, many times because i have a coffee cup that is the same as my brush wash or uh, when i used to use well one of the reasons i got that the citadel brush water brush thing is because i had a cup for water that was exactly the same as another cup that I had my coffee in and i used to get mixed up Every time I see that black spot on Fox's mat, I try and wipe it off my phone. Yeah, I do. I do, and I sit here. Uh, I love building stuff. I have started enjoying painting more, but now that I've found Citadel paints. Now, Fox, how many figures go into a small 40 army? For, excuse me, 40k army. 
uh, it's all based on points and power and uh, an army technically an army also depends on what game you're playing you could have be playing a small skirmish game in which case it could just be a squad of five against a squad of five um, uh, you, technically you could play a game with just two command squads which is four dudes and a, and a you know a captain or a sergeant or something like that um, but there are if you look in the um, the 40k rule book there are sort of like structures let's have a look I'll get the rule book hang on yeah. <clears throat> if I can get it out, you were matron. Big massive rule book. Let me see if I think it's in this book. Let me check. I've got to find it first. I think it's in here. It's like a detect. There we go. There we go. Right, I'm going to pull the camera back. Uh. Put it in focus. Um, there are different formations. So, for example, <coughs> uh, but <coughs> oh wow, my voice. Give me one second, folks. I need to clear my throat. Sorry about that. So, for example, in a patrol, you've got an HQ, which is one to two, one or two HQs. You can have one to three troops uh, between naught and two elites. Two fa up to two fast attacks, up to two heavy support, and up to two flyers. Now, what this means is, um, where it says one to three, this is what I got confused. One to three troops. That could be three squads of ten. So it could be 30 dudes. Uh, elites 0 to 2, that could be, I can't remember if elites are typically 5 or 10 man squads. Because when you go buy, like, say, some Tempesta Sions or something, like, or, you know, um, you buy a standard squad of, like, what, let's say, Tempesta Sions, it's always like 5 dudes. But the blurb at the back says 5 dudes, but you can add more up to 10. So I think they're in basically chunks of 10. If we use a default figure, uh, I've had Madasa's 12. I know it says 12 something else. So <clears throat> it could be that, for example, uh, a patrol could be three lots of 10 man squads. And that each 10 man squad is like, it, if it's 10 man, it could be like, say, um, six regular guys. Sorry, seven regular guys, two special weapons or heavy weapons, and what well, special weapons, and a, a, a sergeant. Or it could be. It's kind of really confusing. So it could, you could have like up to three groups of ten, just for a patrol. You could have two elites. I don't know if elite could be like a. It could be just a single figure, or it could be a little group. Um, fast attack. It could be. A, I'm not really sure about the fast attack and that. You have to look at each individual model. And this is where I've not learned it yet. Basically, flyers naught to two. Uh, so you can have two. Uh, but then you get all the way up to brigade detachments. For example, and there are more than that, a brigade detachment here is troops 6 to 12. So 12 lots of troops could be 12 lots of 10 men. Elites could be 3 to 8. That could be 8 lots of elite. An elite could be, again, like a 5-man squad. It depends what the actual the, the model is. So you get quite massive. Like HQ, an HQ could be one single person, or it could be a command squad, which is up to 5 people. So... You could have up to three, five. You could have up to five HQs there. So it really does vary on what you want to do. And these aren't, as far as I know, you know, the, the absolute law. There's all variations. It depends what you and your friend want to play. I'm just going to put that back down. <coughs> it depends what you and your your opponent want to actually play. <coughs> you might be like, right, let's just have a quick skirmish game. We'll just get, you know, two squads of ten, and we'll just fight each other. It could be that you're just playing from one of the box sets, like the Dark Imperium. So it's like I think 25 guys on each side or something, and it's something like that so it, it's kind of very open like that you could do it on points because right we're going to play you can have whatever you want but you've only got a thousand points and that's where you think right well this guy's worth one point but this imperial knight's worth 300 points so i can have two knights and that gives me 300 points left over for other stuff like troops and vehicles so you, it could just be your set of points value and it doesn't matter what you use you've only got a thousand points <clears throat> so it can get quite fun you could have one army has like three imperial knights and a tank maybe a Lehman Russ or something like that and the other army has just loads and loads of troops on foot because they both use their a thousand points differently 
Revelle Aqua Paints are great. The lid comes off and locks onto the bottle. I use that lid as a palette, says Tony Blackwell. Uh, and then you have the apocalypse sized games. Yes. George Flauter says, Fox, I want the opposite of you and paint a bunch of grunt suits in 40k motifs. Maybe a bunch of Zakus and GMs as two separate armies trying to figure out how many I would need. Um, <clears throat> you could basically, as many as you want, to be honest, if they're all HGs, yeah, don't do Master Grade, that might cost you a bit of money. Um, you could just like have like squads of five. If you go and look at, um, say, um, some of the, the, the five man say space marine squads um generally it's four dudes and a commander of some sort which is typically a sergeant um and typically the sergeant's got like a, a pistol and a sword or something like that uh the th three of the dudes have got regular weapons and the fourth dude has some kind of more powerful weapon like a flamer or a plasma rifle or something like that so it's generally a commander of some sort like a sergeant a guy with a heavy weapon not a heavy weapon but a special weapon of some sort and then three grunt troops so you might have like three Zakus, um, a goof, three Zakus for your grunts, a goof for your maybe special weapon, and then char in a Zaku of some sort as your as your sort of leader for that squad. That'd be a simple five man squad. Um, or you could have a ten man guy, ten guys. In which case it'd be the same. So you'd have one leader, but you'd have twice as many guys with the special weapon, and twice as many guys with the grunt weapons. Kind of cool actually. A good idea. Doing the opposite. Uh, Andy McLeish, sorry, I was posting up on the boom hut and making a brew. Do do do. Sound like a George Flaherty. Sounds like a good 100 kits. Yikes. No, you could just do small squads. Doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to make. Fast attack are things like bikes or troops with jump packs, says Jeff. Yes, I remember that. Uh, bikes, jump packs, and speeders. Yeah, I'm still learning, so I've, I've not really read through the rulebook that much. I've done little bits here and there, so I've not had a chance to read through it fully. So I'm still learning lots of it. I haven't got any of those kind of vehicles or anything like that yet, so I'd, I've not had to read up on those. Right, so we've got a little bit of painting done. Not much, not much. Uh, I think what we should do now is we're halfway through. I think this time we gave some stuff away, don't you? I think we need to do some stickers and some other bits. So, uh, what I shall do... Uh, don't forget speeders, flying sleds, Odaka, says uh, Andy McLeish. Yeah. Right, so what I'll do, I shall get the stickers and things out. If you've never seen one of these shows before, we do sticker giveaways and we do uh, actual thing giveaways. This week we have uh, just the model making guru stickers this week. There we go. You remember how I wrote the names on them last week? I didn't send out the... I just wrote the names on random ones and put them back in the pack. Now, if you're waiting for a sticker or a prize from the last couple of weeks, they haven't gone out yet. Uh, as I say quite often, I don't do all the mailing out of prizes and stickers at the end of every show. I tend to go to the post office typically once or twice a month. Um, just because I have to go there for other stuff. So instead of like going backwards and forwards to the post office and all that, I tend to let everything pile up. And then when I go to the post office, I take all the prizes and stickers and stuff at the same time. So don't panic if you've not had your stickers or your prizes yet. They're still there in a pile. They'll be going out in the next week or two. Uh, so they should be coming through to you soon. So don't panic. Don't panic. Uh, right. So what we'll do, we shall start off with some stickers uh, before we do uh, last week's giveaway winner. So as always, uh, what we'll do is I will read a question and then the first person to answer correctly in the chat will win a sticker. Now, uh, if you, I have had a few through, but if you want to get a free sticker without having to answer a question, all you need to do is send me a question and answer that I can use to give away a sticker. So if you'd like to send me a question and answer, send me an email. I'll put the address up again in case you haven't got it. It is modelmakingguru at gmail.com there on the screen uh, if you want to send me a question and answer please do you're more than welcome it saves me thinking of one just make sure to put in your name and your address in the question in the email as long as I'll start that again make sure to put your as well as your question and answer include your name and address so I don't need to mail you back and say thanks what's your name and address so I can send you a sticker if I read your question out I'll send you a sticker anyway so uh, now, before we go anywhere, I'll get that hair off the workbench. Before we go anywhere, we need to refresh the page. There's another one. Get off. Downside of having long hair, they get everywhere. Oh, get off. Um, yes, I shall. Uh, before we go anywhere, you need to refresh because there's often. Oh, hang on, leaving. Somebody's leaving. Somebody's leaving. Where? Well, who's leaving? 
I don't know who's leaving, but whoever said they were leaving in chat, I'll see you soon. Thanks for coming in. Uh, right, so. Oh, uh, J.S. Ido, thanks for the show, Fox, and everyone have a great day. Thanks for coming in, dude, or dudette. I never know which. Thank you very much. Right, so uh, we'll start all that again. So, yes, there's usually a lag between the chat and the video stream by now. So before we do anything, hit refresh on your browser. Refresh, it's up here somewhere if you're in Chrome or I've no idea in Internet Explorer because nobody uses that. Uh, hit refresh. And then when this page is refreshed, make sure to drag the slider all the way across to the right. So everybody is up to date. And I'll see if we've got some questions. I think we have. Uh, right, we have quite a few. Okay, so everybody refreshed and dragged the slider all the way over to the right hand side. Hopefully. Okay, right. So, if you have all, um, refresh the page and also Doctor Who, the prisoner, and the number forty-six to cover the answers for the sticker today. Lol, says Jazz. I know. I've not read the questions yet, so he's you know he might be right. You never know. Right. So the first one is from uh, Nim Cinderin. He sent this in. Uh, so Nim, you didn't include your name and address. So make sure to send me a mail with your name and address. So tell me to send you a sticker. I'd say it every time. Send me the question answer and include the name and address. Oh. Anyway, yes. So, <clears throat> Nim sends a question in. <clears throat> My voice is going again. Uh, are we ready? Uh, now, there is a... Mm, there's a bonus question on this one. So, I'll, if you get both, it's the first one to get both, we'll get two stickers. How good's that? The, so, don't just give me one of them. I want both answers, but there's two there's two questions in one. First one to get both of them, right? Gets two stickers. <gasps> I know, I know. So are we ready? Are we ready? Here we go. What is the name of the Norse god Odin's horse called? Bonus question, what is the horse's mother called? So what is the name of Odin's horse and that horse's mother? So Odin's horse, go. Odin's horse and the horse's mother. Remember, I go off the answer I've received, not whether it's correct or not. And I want both. So you have to win. You have to have both to get both stickers. I need the horse and the horse's mother. Some of you are just doing one word. There should be two words. The horse and the horse's mother. What is the name of the Norse god Odin's horse called? And what is the name of the horse's mother? Horsey and Mrs. Horsey. <laughs> so I'm wanting two names to get two. Uh, Jonathan Tirastanen says Sleep Near and Loki is the right answer. Sleep Near and Loki. Sleep Near the horse and Loki the horse's mother. So, uh, Jonathan, well done. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Send me uh, an email. This address here. With your name and address and just say that you won two two model making guru stickers and i'll send you two model making guru stickers uh nim if you want another sticker send me your name and address and i'll i'll send you a sticker as well uh remember if you have sent me your name and address before for something if you want a prize or a sticker i don't keep as soon as i send your stuff out i delete the email so i don't keep your name and address uh right so yes so um well done next one next we have let's have a look uh do 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 let's have another one uh, Hang on a minute. And I've got another one here somewhere. Okay, here we go. It's actually a Warhammer themed one. Yay! For once. Right, so I need a swig of coffee because my voice is going terrible. Those of you who know me, uh, you know, anyway, I gave up smoking about five or six weeks ago. And since then, I can't talk for more than an hour before my voice starts going, yeah, and it's, I don't know why. Right, next question. Next question is a Warhammer one. Are we ready? Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Ready, ready, ready. 
Okay, this is for Ann Sticker. It's a question from uh, Andy McLeish. Andy, you didn't send me your name and address. <laughs> send me an email with your name and address and say that you want your sticker and I'll send you a sticker. Right, question. <clears throat> Games Workshop and Forge World team produce a siege dreadnought for space marines named after a mythical sea serpent. What is the name of the sea serpent? Go. Games Workshop and Forge will produce a Siege Dreadnought for Space Marines named after a mythical sea serpent. What is the name of the sea serpent? Well, that was answered like within milliseconds. Jordan Nash is the first one in. It says Leviathan. And the answer is indeed Leviathan. So, Jordan, well done. Hottest off the trigger finger there. It was like straight away. So well done, Jordan. Um, send me your name and address. Send me an email with the sticker and I'll, you know how to do it by now. Uh, just tell me you want a sticker and I'll send you a sticker. Uh, and we'll do one more. We'll do, have we got one more? Oh, then I get a mail from Andy McLeish. Like a spoon. I forgot to include my address. <laughs> well done. Uh, we shall do one more. And we'll do it in the old traditional way. The way Mama used to make it. Which is me writing a number on my hand. Because I've got to do at least one of these. So, uh, let's come up with the number. Wow, I can't even write today. Let's just scrub that off because I made a right arse of that. I'm going to write a number. It is a number between... Are we ready? It is a number... One day I will put 42, you know. And <laughs> we're like, what? It's a number between 90 and 100. Go. What number is on my hand? Between ninety and a hundred. Lee Gallup says, "Oh, my local Warhammer shop is called Leviathan. I get it now." While you're answering, I'm going to go for an enormous wee because I need to go for a wee. So you keep answering. I'll be back in a second. Hang on, I'll put some music on as well, so you can have some music to listen to while I'm having an enormous wee. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, let's find you some music. Right, I'm going for a wee. Back in a second. And we are back. There we go. Right, let me just set everything back the way it was. And that there. Right, where are we? Right, so I asked you, what was the question? Yes, I asked you, uh, what was the magic number on my hand? And let's see who got there first. I'll scroll back and find out. It was between 90 and 100. And the correct answer was, who got there first? Do, 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 do. George Flouter. I keep reading a lot you do lately, George. George Flouter was the first with 97. There you go, see, 97. There you go, bam, straight in. So, George, well done. I've had your email address about, thir address about 13 times now, but send me an email with your name and address, and we'll send you more stickers. There you go. I don't know. Brilliant, well done. Everybody's got their stuff. Don't fall in, Fox. Uh, everything come out okay? Ew. If the number is still in his hand, he didn't wash well. I, I, it's indelible. That bit came off. Trust me, I washed. I, I washed, don't worry. Fox, you didn't wash your hands. I did. I always do. I'm just very fast. Right. Hmm. So, those are the... F yes, I did wash my hands. Thank you very much. Honestly, it's sharpie. I just quick wash my hands. I'm not washing the back of my hand. I'm washing... I only use one hand. 
Anyway, let's just move away from the toilet thing. Anyway, nonsense. Uh, right, so we need to do uh, the giveaway from last week and the giveaway from this week. So I'll put these stickers over there. Now, if you remember last week, we had these awesome prizes. Trees and soap. Tre I'm going to pull the camera out a bit because we will need to, you know, show off whatever the next prize is, won't we? So let's move that out a little bit and get it in focus. Didn't wash my hands, you know, honestly. Think you me are, my mother. Right, so we, last week we had trees and soap. Trees and soap. Brilliant little trees. You could use them for anything from 135th up. And this brilliant, brilliant... There's no nurgly bloke fly zinging around me at all. Stop it. Um, this brilliant, brilliant brush cleaning soap. This is the best. I just love this stuff. So I asked you um, to do a tree fact. So I'm going to do a bit of a screen share like we always do. So I need to do this. And then... Inception. And then go like that. And there we are. There is last week's stream. So are we still talking about me of not washing my hands? Avi Admadar says he's uh, just finished the Kill Team Scenery. Gorgeous kit. Wow, that's fast. You peed on your hand, didn't you? No. It's not a fly, it's a spider, says Merlin's Muse. Oh, that was hand washing. Right, anyway, let's just move on. Move on, children, honestly. Right, so yes, I asked you to put a tree fact. Uh, I think we have many, uh, many tree facts. Uh, trees are great because I am one, says Ghost Lyle. Trees provide cover plus one block. Uh, tree houses for garden idiots. I will refresh the page before we do the draw because I'm sure some of you will have remembered just at the last minute. Uh, trees are great because they give us lemons and when life gives you lemons, you pick up a new gumpler. There you go. Trees are good because they make oxygen. If your face smells from wearing a mask, maybe you should use the brush soap on your beard. Good advice. Mmm, uh, trees. I like trees. Trees are great because Tress. <laughs> says Teen 2000. I know, it's, it's, I know. Uh, trees are awesome. I hug loads on my way home from the pub. Yeah. Uh, trees are great because for a long time they've been letting dinosaurs, cats and dogs pee on them. True fact. True fact. Right. What I will do before we actually uh, do this, I will refresh the page because it's been sat there for an hour or so. I will obviously pause because we're going to get an advert and you don't want to. Oh, don't get an advert. Ooh, rah. Brilliant. Right. So, anybody who just remembered to comment like in the last hour and a half. So this is last week's show. I'm going to take the URL, put it into the YouTube random comment picker, which picks comments randomly, randomly from the YouTube video. Um, uh, not that one, that's an advert, don't want to press that. Load in the comments. We had 30 individual comments. Okay, so let's find out who won. So are we ready? Are we ready? I'm not sure if I commented, says Merlin's Music, it's too late now. Uh, week three. Two, one. Paul uh, Di Tommaso says, Trees are great because they are versatile. They provide oxygen, shade, and more. So, Paul Di Tommaso, welcome. What am I saying welcome for? I'm an idiot. Paul Di Tommaso, well done. You are the winner of the soap and the trees. Let me just come back to us again. Back in the room, back in the room. So, Paul Di Tommaso, well done, well done, well done. You have won some trees. And some soap, some trees. And soap trees. Soap trees, soap trees. Tree soup, tree soup, tree soup. Trees. You've won there. So send me... <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Glass bottle, bottle glass. So send me an email with your name and your... Well, obviously your name and your address. And I will get these sent off to you. Uh, include your phone number just in case. Because uh, sometimes if you're outside the UK, sometimes sending stuff, you have to put a phone number in. So send me an email with your name, address and phone number just in case. And I'll put down that you won the trees and soap. And we'll get this out to you. So well done, well done. Well done. And I need a swig of coffee. No. Because I saw, I saw, as I was doing that, I saw an important piece of news. Important news, apart from the fact that Aviad had an enormous box arrive. By the way, if you're in the Boom Hut, I haven't watched it yet, but if you're in the Boom Hut, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash model Boom Hut. Go and check out Aviad's post. Apparently I've been advised, I've not seen it yet. I'm reliably informed by Mama Fox, because she reads the boom up, uh, that uh, Aviad put a little video up about unboxing all his Warhammer stuff that he won a stream boss. So yeah, don't forget, folks, stream boss, if you want to win up to two or three hundred quids worth of stuff, get putting your super chats and your tips just like that. Just just like that. Just like that there. 
Uh, Amy Carmen, 555 for subscribed. Thank you, Amy. Well done. That's taken a little bit of Aviad's health off, a little tiny bit. So remember, people that subscribe, take the health off. If you do a tip through the tip jar, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru, uh, that takes health off. And if you do a, what's the other one? I forgot what the other one is now, super chat. If you do a super chat on the chat window, the little dollar sign underneath the chat bit where you type, if you do a super chat, that also takes some health off. And the more, the more you pay through super chat or through the tip jar, the more you put through, the more health it takes off. And all that money gets put to one side to pay for the prize that you might win. So remember, tips, I forgot my idea, tips, chat, super chat, and subscribes, all take the health down. Let's get Aviad down to zero health as quickly as possible, because I want somebody else to suddenly realise they can order 300 quid worth of stuff from Games Workshop. I want somebody else to be like, wow, actually, I can order quite a lot of stuff. I can I can get all the things. It's, it was quite funny watching uh, emails back and forth between me and Aviad, because Aviad was like just running around in circles like an excited puppy, because he realised he could get all the things. But like I said, what did he get? He got the uh, Knights Renegade set, so two Knights of Scenery. He got the entire Kill Team box set, some extra data cards for Kill Team, and a seam removal tool. Oh, it was great. Anyway, right, so we need to do this week's giveaway. You know what that means? You know what that means? You know what time it is now, don't you? It means it's time for me to get everything queued up and ready because it is time for... Wow, that delayed sound effect thanks to my hard drive spinning up. Oh, son of a... I try every time I try. I was spot on, pressed everything at the right time, and it's still like... Uh, it was still like 10 seconds out. Oh, well, never mind. Never mind. So, uh, welcome to the Wheel of Giveaways. If you've not seen this before, this is where we spin the wheel. The wheel has a list of all the things that I've been sent, or that I have, or that I've bought, or that I've got, um, to give away as prizes. Uh, either because it's stuff that's in my stash that I just need to get rid of because I'm never going to build it, uh, stuff that I've been sent by retailers or manufacturers uh, because they want me to pimp their shizzle, which is absolutely fine. If you make stuff, if you're a retailer or you're a, a manufacturer or you make garage kits or anything, whatever you do, if you make stuff and sell it, send me some. I'll shout your business down from the rafters. Uh, or it's just stuff that you guys have sent me to give away because you've got stuff in your stash and you've said to me, I'm never going to make anything. I'm never going to make all these kits. Can I send them to you and you give them away to somebody to make? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. And we have lots of amazing stuff. We have some incredible stuff in the giveaways list. There's, I'm looking now and I can see a very, very expensive armoured uh, car. I can see a very, very expensive Verkar Master Grade Gundam. I can see all kinds of wonderful things. So anyway, yes, here's how it works. I press the button, the wheel spins. It tells us what the prize is going to be. Now let's have a look. Before I go, before I do this, there was a spider fact. I'll have to come back and do the spider fact in a minute because I started doing that and I got excited. Right, we're ready. So, let's spin the wheel and find out what we're giving away. So last week was trees and soap. <clears throat> let's see if we can do a bit better this week, eh? We can do better this week. Ready? Three. Stand by for the annoying noise. Three, a two, a one. A pew. <laughs> That's dead loud. It's, it's overloading on my VU meter here. This week is shiny blue. What the hell was shiny blue? I've got no idea. I gave it a dumbass name and I can't remember what the hell it was now. Um, <clears throat> right, give me a minute. I've got to remind myself what the hell shiny blue. <laughs> oh, ass. Hang on, hang on. What is shiny blue? Uh, oh, I know what shiny blue is. Oh yes, oh yes. I know what shiny blue is. Right, let me uh, let me play the close down music and we'll, we'll come back. There we go. Yes, I had to remind myself then. I gave them all. Some of them I couldn't think of silly names, but some I gave stupid names, and it's like, what the hell is that? So this week's prize is this beautiful, beautiful Warhammer book. It is uh, Nagash, the Undying King. And the reason I called it shiny blue is because it has this incredible inlaid embossed, uh, just really mesmerizing sort of reflective pattern on there and artwork, which I could spend hours just looking at. It's like, wow, that's amazing. And it is a limited edition. It's, 800, it's uh, number 855 of 1000 in printings. <clears throat> now, whether it's there's only 1000 of this book printed and that's it, <clears throat> or whether it's I need to clear my throat. 
sorry about that. Whether it's 1,000 of the imprintings, and that's it, or whether it is actually just 1,000 of this book in hardback. Now, I say hardback, it's actually really nice. It's kind of slightly squishy. It's really kind of mellow. It's a really, really nice textured book cover. Uh, but yes, uh, this is yours if you win. From the maelstrom of a sundered world, the eight realms were born. The formless and the divine exploded into life. I read this last time, so I'm not going to read it again. Sigmar set his artisans to work, and for long as ages as they toiled, striving to harness the power of the stars. As Sigmar's great work neared completion, he turned back to the realms and saw that the dominion of chaos was almost complete. The hour for vengeance had come. Finally, with lightning blazing across his brow, he stepped forth to unleash his creation. The Age of Sigmar had begun. Yeah, cool. That can be yours. So this is the prize. So, uh, how do you win this awesome prize next week? <clears throat> well, I do need a lozenge. I need all the lozenges. Oh, hang on. Oh, how do you win this? Dead easy. Uh, I'll draw a winner next Monday. When this show is finished, when this live stream is finished, and it's just merely a video upon the channel, all you need to do is go and find it and put a comment on. And what I want you to do is put uh, a comment. Let's do another facts one. I want facts about facts about lightning. Give me some fact. Give me a fact about lightning or oh, thunder. Thunder and lightning. Give me a fact about thunder and lightning. And I will pick one of the comments at random next week and you can win this beautiful, beautiful Age of Nagash book. The Undying, Undying King. I've started reading a couple of the uh, the Warhammer books and they are actually really, really good. I'm not reading the Age of Sigmar stuff. But yeah, they are it's like really, really good. So, yes, that is the prize. So good luck to everybody. I say wait till the show is finished. Uh, then simply put a comment down with a fact about thunder and lightning. Now, where were we up to? We were doing these little puppies, weren't we? So I need to move the camera back again. <clears throat> so we've got to do those. We've got to paint the back of those. Uh, can I do that without taking off the stick? I'm going to paint the back of that first anyway, so let's get that bit done. Let's move in a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. It's a little bit closer. Move a little bit closer. I'll change the focus back for you as well. If I can find it. Do, 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 do. Apologies for the wobbly camera. It's just every time I do anything on the computer, it's on the other desk where the camera is mounted to. So that's why the camera wobbles. Right. So we, we need to. We've done these bits. Uh, we need to. Uh, Cy Reynolds says, I come back just in time. I can confirm that book is sweet. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, there was important news. Hang on. Uh, for those of you in the boom hut. You remember how Kenneth put a picture up about uh, he had he's got a huntsman spider that lives in the room where he does his model making. Those of you who don't know in Australia, huntsman spider is a spider this big. It's like the size of, of France, and it lives in his uh, in his like in his workroom where he does his painting and building. And he doesn't mind it because it, it eats all the stuff that would kill him. And huntsmen are harmless, and it's massive. And he put a picture up. It was sitting on his water pot. His water pot was there. And there's huntsman spider on it, like the size of a house. And uh, so he put a picture up. We've got an update. Uh, Dad Mike Mountain says, huge spider update. Kenneth has placed the water bottle outside the back door. The huntsman refused to come out for him. Yeah. What, so it was living in your... It was, it, was, it was hiding in the water bottle. I need clarification on this, Mike Mountain. Was it in his water bottle? Was it on the water bottle? Was he trying to get it out? I thought he quite liked it. Because it was killing all the nasties. Uh, hmm. We all joked and said it was helping him do his denubbing. Mm -hmm. Wheel of giveaways. I never win, says Lynn Dipple. You never know. You might do. You're starting to sound like Sprue, says Mike Mountain. Yeah, and you know what happened with Sprue. He won Chisel. <laughs> so, yeah. The Necro book. Just be nice. I've been... Good, nice, just realised I've been a patron for 18 months already. Yeah, I know, you have done it. It'll be nearly time to do your next yearly build. Uh, yeah, I, just, I was kind of hoping that you would have had it by now. But then summer happened. Too many legs, says Andy McLeish. 
Uh, it drank all the water, but would not come out with a gentle nudge, so he placed it outside. Wow, it, dra it drank a whole water thing full of water. <laughs> Blimey. So he placed it outside. Oh, how big was the... Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm guessing it was bigger than this. Bigger than a standard Citadel one, because it was, like, that big. And it was only a baby huntsman. So, I don't know. I mean, the spider itself must have been about that big. I would guess. It was actually quite... I don't mind... I wouldn't like one here, but... I have held a tarantula in my hand and it was amazing. It wasn't scary, it was like amazing. It was beautiful and it was dead soft. So I'd probably quite be intrigued by a huntsman. I'd probably hold one in my hand. They're, they're harmless. I don't mind big massive spiders that move reasonably slowly. I just don't like house spiders that leg it. Uh, what was I doing? I've got no idea. Uh, Andy McLeish says, Dad, I think it wanted to stay it was. It was snugly warm. Oh, hello. What was that? We had a thing. Hang on. Uh, we had uh, Akatsuki3389 has subscribed. Thank you very much, Akatsuki. You've taken my health, or taken Aviad's health down a little tiny bit. Welcome, welcome. Welcome for subscribing. Don't forget to, anybody who subscribed today, by the way, or new, thank you for subscribing. Don't forget to hit the little um, notification bell as well which YouTube never explains to anybody. Hit the little notification bell. That means any time I start a live stream, you get a little notification uh, that says, hey, Fox is live streaming. Go and check it out. Right, so we need to get some paint on the underside of these now. Now, you don't actually, you wouldn't think you need to, but you can see just underneath the uh, armor plating there, or under there. So probably best if I just get them painted just to uh, have them covered. So... Oops, Daisy. We shall do that now. Scuttlers Fox says, Annie McLeish, you don't like scuttlers. Yeah, I don't mind scuttling, but shooting and legging it fastly is not what I want. Right, so, yes, let's get this done. So we, where's my little palette gone? Where's my dad palette? Right, to get some more out. So we're just going to use exactly the same colour, it's just the lead belt like we've used already. I'm just going to go in with some mower. Mower. And this is no different to, if, you, if you're a Gundam builder, a Gumpler builder, it's no different at all to painting the inside of your armour parts. Because as you know on Gumpler, a lot of times you can't see the inside of the armour pieces anyway. But you never quite know which bits might be visible. And it's always worth it sometimes, just like, just buckling down and... You know what, just paint inside anyway. So we've got a few little bits we need to paint on here. So let's find out where the spot, there's the spot. Spot marks the spot. So we have back here, not a massive amount. I'm using my monster brush for this. I could use a different brush, but I'll just use the monster. I'm not too fussed about multiple coats here because even less than I was on the other bit, because this is gonna be pretty much not seen anyway. It's just to make sure there is some continuity. If somebody does look underneath, there is some continuity, and you can tell it's it's painted. So I'm get inside there on that bit of armor, and also on this piece here as well. Uh, that. So I'm not being too neat or careful. We're delicate with it. I'm just getting the paint on there. Because what we'll do is we'll do a bit of shading and, and nonsense under here. So a lot of this won't be visible anyway. And when it is fully weathered, it'll be a bit darker than the rest. So it's absolutely fine. It's not, it doesn't have to be neat and tidy under here. Again, like I was saying before, if you remember, about not cutting corners necessarily, but about making things easy for yourself. If a, if a part isn't ever going to be seen, there's nothing wrong in not painting it. I'm not spending any time, wasting any time painting it. If something's going to be hard to see, and it's unlikely people will see it, but not impossible, then, you know, get it painted, but, you know, don't bust a gut. If it's unlikely to really ever be seen, nobody's going to notice if it's not painted. So I can see on here, on this one, just get those pauldrons off. Uh, you can see all around the back there 
under that part and you can see under there so it's basically all of that so I need to make sure that's painted and I'm not panicking if I get brush marks or anything like that because again it's going to be very heavily weathered under here and it's very rarely ever going to be seen by anybody so it's just to make sure that there is a little bit of continuity it's not just a drastically different color and you can tell from a mile away because it doesn't really matter it's not that important so you don't want to cut corners but you know you have to learn you have to pick your battles and there are situations where there's some things it's just not worth making the effort oops I'm trying to find somewhere to hold it now because I've got old paint on everything so I'm not being careful painting this I'm not doing a really careful special paint job I'm just jabbing the brush in and going for it because again it doesn't really matter that much it's more just a token bit of colour on there so it blends in uh, Aviad Madar says so time to buy a codex yeah well you don't need one for uh, kill team but you'll need one for your knights <laughs> and then uh, who do you get in the uh, Aviad who did you get in the kill team is it um, Primaris Marines and Gene Stealers because then You'd need a codex for your Primaris Marines if you're going to play them with your knights in standard 40k. So you'd need an Imperial Knight Codex and you'd need a Space Marines Codex. And you'd also need a, a, a separate one for your Gene Stealers if you ever wanted to play them. That was a bit thin. That am I doing this off camera? Or am I on camera? I don't know. See, I'm not being I'm not being delicate and careful or anything like that. And it doesn't really matter here. It's just a nod towards continuity because it would look a bit half-assed if it just wasn't painted at all. Nobody's ever going to pick these up and examine them. And I have said right from the start. Um, I'm not doing my usual, you know, skill level 5 display quality paint job on these. Because they're going to be, they're being painted for the tabletop. I want them to look good. But I'm, I'm painting them for the tabletop, not for the display cabinet. So there will be some, you know, shortcuts taken. And things like that, because I don't have to worry too much about anyone looking at them closely. So that's going to do. I'll probably let that dry and give it a second cut under there because that came out a bit thin actually. Let's put a little bit more water. So these aren't going to be my, you know, normal skill level five dedicated. If you look, if you watch my um, Space Wolves Stormwolf paint job, they're not going to be kind of that level because it's not it's not a standalone display piece. It's purely just something to play on the tabletop. I'll still try and do as good a job as possible. I'm just not going to lose sleep over making a museum quality, if you know what I mean. Because there's, there's no point. You're never going to see them that close. I want them to look. I want them to look good and impressive on the tabletop. I'm just not worried if they don't look like they belong in a. You know, I don't want them to look like a display case queen. But I also don't want them to look like I've just slapped some paint on without willy nilly without a thought. I'm probably never going to see the back of those plates, but never mind. Actually, what can you see? If I put this on the leg, what can you actually see? Can you see any of that? E no. Okay. Right. You're never, ever, ever going to see the back of that plate. So. There's no point in me, in any way, shape or form, even beginning to paint it. However, you can see these edges. So I'll just paint these edges. Because what I will need to do, when I actually glue this in place, I'll need to scrape paint off there anyway, so off the inside. So I can save myself a hell of a lot of time by just painting the edges and not worrying. I need to get the thing inside again, don't I? Not worrying 
about the interior because you're never ever going to see that not ever 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 no matter how hard you look because I wasn't sure because there are gaps between the you know the components of the legs I didn't know how much would stick out luckily none of it shows through so we'll just get some paint on the edges and call that one done <laughs> and again these are down by the uh, feet or down the, the, the legs they're close to the ground so these particular pieces will have a bit more weathering than say the armor up at the top like the pauldrons and stuff so again I'm not being too careful because I know there'll be a lot of weathering on these dirt and dust that will hide a multitude of sins so let's get that on that. Do 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 do. Little bit of paint and apologies if you can't see this very well. There will be some metallic dry brushing at the top. So again, if there's any little bits where I've missed a piece or it's a bit patchy, it's fine. It's going to be dirty. It's going to be weathered. And I'm going to do some dry brushing stuff later anyway. Uh, now I am missing one of those. Where did I put it? I put it in a place. I can't remember where that place is. Hang on. Did I put it back somewhere? Did I even? I didn't even paint it, did I? You stupid boy. You stupid boy. <sighs> right, let me rinse the brush off. Didn't even paint it. Because I'm a special. Let's do another test and see. Which bit of this you can see if you glue that on? Can you see inside this? Yeah, you can. You can see quite a lot of inside the sort of the the sort of um, ankle armor. You can see quite a fair bit of that from around the back. So I need to paint at least the top inside of that. So right, I've got a mental note of that now. But I need to paint the other, the outside first. You know, the bit I totally forgot to paint the first time around. Because I especially. Let's try that again. Once again, with feeling. Where are we? Are we, are we in focus? I need to make sure we're in focus, don't we? Hang on. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, take this off. So much work. You know, I'm jealous of these people that have live streams where they have people that do the live stream stuff for them. You know, like you have the person on camera doing whatever they're doing, and then you have somebody off camera doing the pressing buttons and stuff. I don't have that. I have me, and then pressing all the buttons is me when I lean over to my computer and press all the buttons. I don't have the luxury of a producer. Or somebody to press buttons for me. Or, you know, somebody to read the chat. It would be brilliant if it was, like, not just me. But somebody else sat here that could read the chat. Unfortunately, that's not how this works. It's just me. Just little old me. I hope this is in focus. It's not even on the screen. Oh, you idiot fox. I moved my dot, that's why. I moved my dot and everything. Get this bit done. It's quite relaxing painting trim. Because it's so beautifully done on Games Workshop kits. It's so deliberately overpronounced. That it just it's a joy just you know your brush just goes where you want the paint goes where you want it to go everything behaves apart from that bit which went a bit wonky that's down to me rushing probably everything's just well behaved on these kits mm -mm. Uh, 
Ooh, bit too thin, but not too bad. Yeah, a few little splodges, but they'll be hidden. Hidden with the washes and the weathering. Again, these pieces, these are down by the feet, so these will be well dirty. These will be well dirty, these will. Yeah, they'll be filthy dirty. And again, because we're not doing like a a display piece build here, I'm not doing studio quality type paint job. I'm doing a tabletop, acceptable tabletop paint job. Uh, we'll keep the weathering kind of simple. We'll be using some enamels for a shading effect. And then we'll be doing, uh, in fact, I can do the back at the same time. We can, we'll be doing uh some maybe some powders maybe i've done some powders on the night i don't know maybe not on these guys doing some weathering uh because you can do powders or i've actually found some of the some of the the steel legion drab and paints like that are actually quite good to dry brush for dust effects it's quite bizarre but you can actually use the paints to dry brush which is awesome but maybe some powders we'll see Some paint in there. So yes, there will need to be some paint removal when things are glued on. When I did the Imperial Knights, the armor that goes around the ankles on the feet, like this equivalent on the on the knight, is a right pain to get on. And glue. I, I, I don't feel confident the ones on my knight are actually never going to fall off. I think they're gonna. I have to really ginger when I handle it because I think they're not glued in properly. Because it's really hard to line up the bits when you can't see them. Get some at the top there. It's there. Again, I'm not too fussed about the inside bit because you only you can only just about see it, like you get a hint of it, and you're not going to see that much. And if somebody's actually in a situation where they can see the inside of these parts, I'd be like, hey, can you get your hands off my expensive model, please? Because I didn't give you permission to actually physically touch it. Thank you very much. You touch my model, I break your fingers. That's how it works. That's how it's officially worked. Uh, oh, Dave's in. Butcher that model. Hey, Dave. Welcome, welcome. <coughs> Excuse me. Welcome, welcome, dude. How are you doing? Nice to see you along. I'm going to change my... Do I need to change my water? Uh, yes, I need to change my water. I'm going to change my water. I shall be one moment. Back in a second. back yeah. whenever you've been doing any kind of work with metallics um, just remember as soon as you finish doing your metallics change your water because the last thing you want if you look in your water you see the little metal bits floating around the last thing you want to do is then get other paint with metallic bits in it because that would just suck right so let's see what chat has been up to uh, Andy McLeish, you spoon! What did I do now? What did I do? I've forgotten. Oh yeah, because I didn't paint that bit. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, I spent hours detailing parts that no one will ever see. I just won't go crazy from knowing it's not done. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the thing is, I'll paint like the pilot and the cockpit in a, in a gumpler, even though nobody's ever going to see it. You never ever see it. I mean, on commissions I used to, but even my own gumpler, I'll still paint the pilot and the cockpit, and then I'll close the cockpit, and it'll never be opened ever again. But I know it's there, and there are times when I, I I can't I can't let myself not paint something. Um, but for this, because this is a tabletop model, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bust a gut because at the end of the day, you know, you play with it enough, and all the paint will come off anyway. So because it's a tabletop model, I'm not gonna worry about it. If it was a display piece, I might worry about it. My instinct would be to paint everything, but I'm, for some people it's like it's not worth stressing about it. Don't panic. It's not the end of the world if if you don't paint this, that, and the other. Uh, let's have a look. 
I went to Hades, it was hell, says James, uh, James Lorimore. Fox, recruit Mama Fox to push the buttons. No, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. She'd just press all the wrong buttons. She knows how to use her Xbox and her iPad. Let's leave it at that. And a Nintendo 3DS, and that's it. Uh... Somebody just sold something for 48 million, but I don't know what. Uh, oh, a 62 Ferrari just sold for 48 million. Wow. I need that kind of money. Bit of typhus corrosion on the feet. Um, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Do, do, do. Let's have a look. When a person at Microsoft is selling off things of value, that says something. Yeah, they're probably getting divorced. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Butcher that model, Dave says. Finished my first three-man Space Marine squad for twenty-three years. It's all coming back to me. Shame my eyes ain't what they used to be. Yeah, my eyes and my hands. Yeah, I can't see what I'm missing, and I can't point. I can't. I can't aim the brush at what I need to hit, and I can't see what I need to hit anyway. Uh, former Microsoft employee. Screw the money, Foxy. I want that car. Eh, I'd rather have the money. I can live off the money for the rest of my life. I can't live off a car for the rest of my life. Uh, okay, just catching up with chat. Right. Uh, right, where are we up to? So we've done some metallic bits. A few little blips here and there. But I'm not going to worry about them, like I said, because there'll be washes and things to go over. Uh, so we've got lots of nice shading. I am really happy with how the shading came out with the... Um, what was it, Cassandora Yellow? Was that the one? I forgot which one it was now. I was going to use Fuegan Orange at first. Then I thought, no, it's a bit too orange. I'm going to use Cassandora Yellow. Which just gives you a nice, sort of, warm shade, a bit of depth to those yellow parts. So that's come out really nice. Now I've painted the metallic on, the, sort of the metallic trim, they really are starting to come together and start to, starting to look kind of proper, proper interesting. It's like, you see there, without the, without the trim painted, it's like, it looks all right. But then, when you painted the trim, it looks a bit better. It makes more sense now, and the lines look a lot straighter. They look nice on there, they're not brilliantly straight, but then you paint the, light, paint the metallics on, and it just gives you some straight edges to work against. Now, what will happen next is, uh, I'm not going to do it now on camera, because we're probably going to wrap up in a minute anyway, but um, the next step for me, once I've got all the metallics painted, is to go over with some null oil to shade that do some shades to get that dark and so when we come back next time next week I, I may have moved ahead again see I never know whether to just like stop and then carry on next week or whether when it comes to Saturday if I've got nothing else to do just crack on and see where I'm up to uh, so it, we might be a bit further on next week I've got to get the other two done up now because I've got to do all their armor and stuff as well I've got to put some hazard straps on the feet like on the um, on the mobile worker the mobile worker has hazard straps on the front of the foot and the back of the foot. There is no back of the foot on these guys. So thankfully, I don't have to do that bit. I only have to worry about this bit. So I've got to try and paint some hazard straps on here. I think I may end up repainting those metal bits in the middle and the feet because, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. David Butcher, that model, says, Love the new Games Workshop paints. By new, he means they came out in 2012, but he's not been around doing it for a while. Uh, Bugman's Glow and Acadian Flesh Tone work nice together. Dude, Bugman's Glow, then Reichel and Flesh Shade. This is how you do skin. Typical, average, Caucasian skin. Bugman's Glow, Reichel and Flesh Shade, Acadian uh, Flesh Tone, and then a very high, a very fine highlight of Kisler Flesh. Perfect. Perfect. It's brilliant. Look at that, that yellow there. I'm really pleased. I'll see if I can zoom in. Give you a better look at that shading, because... Do, 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 do. It's a bit low quality now, but you just get this nice little bit of sort of darkness there before the metal bit comes in. It's not very neat when you look at it close up. Uh, and it's just that little bit of orange down there, just that Cassandora yellow. And it's dead easy because it was literally just paint it yellow, paint the stripes on, do a, 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 a wash with the shade just on that half. And it makes life so easy because it looks interesting, but it took no effort. And that's why I'm loving the Citadel stuff because they've just kind of streamlined everything. So it just makes life fun. So uh, let's have a quick look at the chat. 
do, do, do. Uh, uh, Speedy Cray, all the people who've never driven a supercar want a supercar. Once you have, you still appreciate them aesthetically, but realise that usability and comfort take a back seat. Yeah, and because we, we, we worked on some supercar type things when we were doing detailing. You know, we did Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Aston Martins and all that kind of stuff. And you know what? Boring. We used to have a... Uh, one of our regular customers had an Aventador and an Aston Martin and it was like eh, it's a car after you get past the initial wow factor once you're in there cleaning it you're like it's just a car it's... and then once you actually see the interior of an Aston Martin and realise it's actually a shed on wheels I swear there were there were bits of the dashboard in this Aston Martin uh, it was a DB8 maybe I can't remember anyway bits like the centre console I used to have a Series 3 Land Rover that was basically bits of plywood with veneer glued over the top and stapled on. It's kind of what was in the centre console of this Aston Martin. It wasn't that great. So I've, I've no no illusions over cars. It's, they bore me. Uh, a quick look. What are you doing in chat before we call it a day? Uh, Andy McLeish, not too bad, Spid. Finally posted my supply drop on the Boom Hut. Found your airbrush video invaluable too. Speedy Correct, I'm sort of hovering today. Got my brother visiting for holidays and cooking us dinner despite him not appreciating my latte art this morning. Git. Mm. He's cooking. It's all good. Fox needs the wide load decal in the middle bit. Yeah, I've actually got some uh, I've got some Xeonic logos. I'll have to see if I can find some like you know safety logos and stuff. Some decals. Uh, the oratory is massive. I've just finished painting mine and it's so excessive, says Daniel Smith. Yeah, I mean, the, have I put it back in the box? I've put it back in the box now while I've just been working on this, but I mean, the suit, the mobile suit's this big. It's no good if you can't see it. The mobile suit's that big because it's a mag master grade. And then the oratory's all these wings. I'm going to have fun painting it. I'm not sure what colours we're going to do the oratory yet, though. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's have a look. Right. I've never understood supercars. I'll keep my 20-year-old F250 diesel, says Lee Gallup. I mean, I like, I, don't, I like cars. I'm just not... I don't. I mean, I've got, you know, I've got, a, I've got a 2002 Fiesta with a shark mouth painted on it, so I'm not really, you know, into nice cars. But I love my car, but I don't know. Modern cars just bore me. Supercars and stuff. Expensive cars, doubly so. And especially when you see most of these really nice top of the range cars, usually driven by a complete idiot. It's usually a complete knobber behind the wheel. If it's like some, you know, 70 or 80, 90 grand car or more, and you're thinking, you're going to be a complete knobber, aren't you? And they usually are. Yay, shark mouth, says Dad. Yeah, I like my car, but I'm not into cars. Right, well, I think that's going to do us. Uh, come up to half five. I think we're pretty much done. Get these off the stick. So I'm not sure where we'll be up to next week. I say I'm, I'll, I'll plow ahead and get, at the very least, get the metallics done on the other uh, two armages. I suspect I'll have carried on and done some more bits and bobs as well by then, um, just for the sake of getting stuff done. What I'm tending to, what I tend to do at the moment is. Um, Spend the Saturday doing other stuff, uh, and then leave whatever I'm doing on Sunday for Sunday. But I might do a little bit. I've got I've got loads of dudes to paint up, uh, and I can't actually paint stuff up. So uh, I can't paint little figures on telly like this because there's not much I can show you. It literally just be a, the back of my head while I'm got my head pressed against the figure. So I'm not really sure yet, but we'll see. So I'm not sure what we'll be up to next week. Uh, but as always, don't forget. Uh, if you want to win this week's giveaway prize, which is this beautiful, beautiful Warhammer book. Uh, the What was it called again? I've forgotten. It's not got the title on the outside. N Nagash the Undying King, with this beautiful cover. And it's like, it's textured, it's three-dimensional. This isn't a picture. It's actually got, it's like that lumpy wallpaper you get with the squishy bits. It's really nice. I like that. It's just really relaxing just to sit and touch the book. Uh, you can win this. All you need to do is put a comment on this week's stream when the when the stream is finished. <clears throat> and it's just a video on my channel, the throat's going again. Um, put a comment on the stream, and the comment it just needs to be a thunder and lightning fact. A fact about thunder and lightning, and you can win this awesome book next week. Uh, if you want a sticker or a prize this week, then just drop me an email to uh, modelmakingguru at gmail.com. There. Where is it? It's there. Uh, 
uh, and give me your name and address. And if you won the prize, Paul Di Tommaso, send me your name, address, and phone number. And make sure to put in the email what you won because I won't remember uh, whether you won a prize or you won a sticker or what have you. So I remember what I'm sending you. But I think that's going to do us for this week. Uh, I will just get everything ready for the big close down. I should get everything ready for once. But yes, so uh, tune in next week. <clears throat> Uh, I will now go off and uh, clear my throat. I will go off and watch Aviad Madar's video uh, to see exactly all the stuff he got in his loot haul. As I say, don't forget, we'll carry on next week. He's down to 95,769. Not much. He's got a little tiny bit of a, of, a, of a little dint in his health at this end. You're not bringing him down much. We need more of them super chats and more of them tips going through. Because we need to get this down. Remember, he got almost 300 quid worth of, of models as a prize and you can have the same thing so get doing his thing get doing his tips it's too late now because obviously don't do it once the stream's finished because it won't take it account of those you have to do it while the stream is going on but uh, yes yeah, so we'll hopefully get him down a bit more but i think that's going to do us so uh, until next week thank you very much for watching uh, as always hang on i'm reading i'm reading something drink water foxy i've it's not that it's just i've got my coffee oh. it's just after about an hour my voice goes really hoarse because I'm not smoking. My throat's not got used to it yet. Uh, I think there's, somebody said something. Oh, no, just everybody's saying, yep, yeah, we're talking about cars still. Nah. Anyway, yes. So thank you very much for watching. Do take care of yourself. Stay tuned for next week. Remember, there's no e-models show tomorrow night if you're a regular watcher of the e-models live stream. Um, Chris and I have both got other commitments tomorrow night because it's bank holiday and we wouldn't want Tedward to do a show on his own. It wouldn't be fair. So there's no show tomorrow night for the bank holiday. If you're in the UK, have yourself a good bank holiday tomorrow. Day off work for most of us. Woo! Um, have a good bank holiday and we'll see you uh, for the e-model show next Monday. Not this Monday. And I'll see you either next Sunday when we have the next one of these or if I can get another live stream out of that um, Otori build, I'll see if I can do another live stream. I might not because it might all be complex painting and stuff now. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, uh, oh, don't forget one other thing as well. Uh, if you haven't noticed it, I'm doing another giveaway as well as this giveaway for this thing. I'm giving away uh, two packs of the C1 Metalizer. There's a video up on my channel now, and it's just a giveaway video. So make sure to go and put a comment on that video. Watch the video. It tells you what to put. Put a comment on the video, basically. Um, make sure to enter that. We've had loads of comments. There's like tons of them. Everybody wants this. So if you want one of these, make sure to go and put a comment on that video as well. I'm drawing that next Saturday, I think. Uh, so until next time, that's going to do us. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourself. I can't have to do this. I'm no good at this wrapping up, am I? I just rubbish at wrapping things up. Right. Anyway, I shall stop talking. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios, amigas. Amigas? No, that's a kind of computer. Amoebas. Wow. I'm, oh, I'm going now. Bye. <laughs>